1089 and 1053 AM. Mike Dickin on Talk Sport. Good evening, I'm Mike Dickin. This is Talk Sport. I am seeking a believer as we approach Christmas. I would like to speak to someone, to everyone, who believes in God. Is there really anyone left who truly believes? There is no God. Richard Dawkins, the author of The God Delusion, caused a tidal wave of despair from listeners to whom God, whoever he or she may be, is a major factor in their lives when he appeared on this programme a few months ago. The mailbag the following day was unbelievable. To some people, in fact, it seems to be a majority of people, their religion, be it Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Sikhism, Hinduism, Scientology, or any other apparent belief system, is what actually defines them. Quoting supposed ancient text replaces conversation or even discussion in their world. However, their importance and their profile far exceeds those of genuine thinkers and people of achievement. Why do you get a seat in the House of Commons because you believe in God? Or in the House of Lords, even. In just over a week's time, the world, well, most of it, it seems, will be celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, the illegitimate Son of God. Apparently, even the Christian Bible shows that if there ever was such an event, it happened in September, not December. Like most, if not all, religious texts, it's contradictory. However, the major point of conflict for me is the way the religious among us claim that without religion there is no morality. What our nonsense. If you are a believer, be it in Christianity or any other religion, if you believe in God, give me a call. 0870402020 is our number. I'm joined once again by Richard Dawkins, who is a professor of zoology at Oxford and an evolutionary biologist. Richard, good evening. Good evening. It was an amazing response we had to the programme last time. After you'd gone, yeah. uh, we were overwhelmed. I, I mean, I've never seen a mailbag like it. Um, it was surprising to me that those who wrote didn't choose to phone at the time you were here but wrote quoting passages from the Bible, from the Quran, from all manner of supposed religious texts, proving their point. But it seems that without those texts, they have no belief. And I wonder how relevant that is in, in the way you do your work. The text is all. Yeah, it is a bit weird, isn't it, to base your beliefs on a text. And when, you, when you're asked why you believe the text, the answer is, oh, because it says so here. Mm. So it's a kind of complete circle, a complete circle of an argument. It, it defies argument. It, it crushes argument. It, um, there is no argument. There is no conversation. There is no discussion. It's just a, a series of quotations, one supporting another. And the authentication is contained within the same book. So if you ask, well, why do you believe that God said that? The answer comes back, oh, because it says so in the Bible. And that's what I mean by saying it's circular. You see, a, a lot of the letters said things like, um, because they, they care, uh, may God forgive you, uh, I'll pray for your soul. Yeah, I get a lot of that. You'll rot in hell. Yeah. And, and I think... I feel sorry for the people that say that, but I appreciate their, their concern for my health and welfare, as if God could make any difference to it, you know. <laughs> it's, it, you know, I, I don't have any fear of being struck down by God, because there isn't one. Uh, I do have fear of being struck down by a man who is deluded by his delusion in God. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Um, in other words, the warmongers among us. Um, but let's, I'll tell you what, let's reverse the pattern of the last programme, um, because I think one or two people would like to have a word with you. Is that OK with you? Yeah, that's fine. Fine. Let's go, first of all, then, to Adam in Guildford. Adam, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Good evening. Yes, sir. Hi, yeah. Um, I hear what you're saying about people quoting the text and all of that from the Bible and everything. Um... My experience is like a real experience that happened to me, which has showed me that, um, for me, Jesus is the Son of God and, and the truth. See, what happened to me was I got hooked into drugs, and before I knew it, I was smoking cannabis every day for six years. And that caused me to have a breakdown, and I got put on to loads of um, medication. And, um, oh, sorry, I get a bit emotional. But um, what happened was... Um, 
after I got put on the medication, I got better. But then I started doing the drugs again because I was feeling better. And then I was on smoking cannabis every day and on equivalent of up to 60 milligrams of Prozac. And then I started to have another breakdown. Even uh, uh, where, on... where, where does God come into this? I'm sorry, but it's... Oh, right, OK. It, it's just coming. And what happened was, I was just about... To, I was literally having another breakdown. And even though I was on the medication to stop it, and a friend of mine invited me on an alpha course, which is like the meaning of life Christianity course. Right. And at the end of it, someone said, would you like to be prayed for and filled with the Holy Spirit? Mm. And I was like, I was, you know, I was just needed, you know, divine intervention. And I said, yes, please. And as soon as I said that and someone prayed for me, I felt this warm glow come upon me. And... Uh, it was just I felt this love as well, and straight away I just knew something had changed, and all my cravings for the drugs went, and all my cravings for the and all my need for the medicated drugs went as well, and the doctors had literally given me a three year plan to come off the Prozac and just and just like that I didn't. No, so all of a sudden you no, you no longer were a drug addict, you no longer wanted to be a drug addict, you yeah. no longer desired the drugs, and you, and you're saying that God intervened. Yeah, it, I just it was a miracle. And yeah. I know, it, and before that happened, I w I'd be like, what you're saying now, you know, you hear all of this, people quote the Bible, but why is that more true than what Islam said or what Buddha says? But for me, it was an experience. All right, well, let, let's, put, let's put the points you made to Richard. Save from drugs by a warm feeling when someone prayed for him. Well, I'm delighted me, but... that you got a, a warm feeling, and I'm delighted that you managed to come off the drugs. Why, don't you, why do you think God let you go on the drugs in the first place? Wouldn't it have been better if he'd stopped you going on in the first place? Well, he gives us free will, oh, because otherwise yeah. we'd be robots. So yeah. it's free will, then? Yeah. I think... I mean, he, he, wants, he wants us to have a relationship with him, but we've got to have free will to say, you know... We've got to be humble to say, you know, I want a relationship with you, but our free will um, just, you know, he gives us free will to do what we want to do, you know? Well, as I say, I am delighted for you, yeah. but does it occur to you that the brain is a remarkably complex organ and easily capable of having hallucinations? What you've described is very much not, you surely must see this, not convincing evidence for the existence of any kind of supernatural being. I, know, I can see your point where you're coming from, but for me, it was of supernatural power. It was, a, it was a love, undescribable. And from that day, which was three and a half years ago, I have a deep joy, a deep love, a deep self-fulfillment of, of that I know I am loved by God. And do you follow and, and all I, the other teachings, therefore? Pardon? Do you follow all the other apparent no, teachings no, of God? No, no, I believe Jesus is... God wouldn't want to confuse us and have loads of different truths. He'd only want us to know one truth, and Jesus is the truth. It, it's a, it's a, similar, a similarly touching story to that of George W. Bush, who, as you know, was a drunk. And he was saved from that by uh, his uh, um, uh, belief that he was a born-again Christian. It seems to have worked for him. It seems to have worked for you. It led him on to invade Iraq because God told him to. Um, let's hope it doesn't lead you on to any similar mistakes. Indeed, and, and good, well done for uh, stopping the drugs. At least uh, there is an achievement you can always put down to your good self, I think. Thank you very much for the call. More in a moment. This is Talk Sport. Once upon a time, there were three beautiful girls who all worked for a major electrical retailer. They were each assigned very hazardous duties. Customer services manager to check out for. But I took them away from all that, and now they work for me. Listen to Angel Delight with Hawksby and Jacobs and the Comet Gadget Angels for the chance to win a paradise playground of great gadget gifts for the angel in your life. Play Angel Delight all next week on Talk Sports with the Comet Gadget Angels on a mission to keep Britain's men out of the doghouse. This is believe in the magic Stay with me. of a little bit of ice. Stay with me. Magnus Irish Cider. Time dedicated to you. Britain's greatest super middleweight and boxer of the year, Joe Calzaki, defends his title for a record 20th time against American superstar Peter Manfredo Jr. from the hit TV series The Contender in what promises to be one of the most exciting events ever at Cardiff's Millennium Stadium, April 7th, plus a full supporting action-packed card. Book now for the boxing event of next year, 7th April Millennium Stadium, Cardiff. Call Sea Tickets on 0870 060 3794. That's 0870 060 3794. The changeover date for the construction industry scheme is nearly here. 
From April, contractors will need to complete monthly returns to HM Revenue and Customs, detailing all payments to subcontractors. Returns will need to be made by the 19th of each month, which means there's no longer any need to worry about individual vouchers. <sighs> to make sure you know what to do, visit new-cis.com or call 0845 366 7899. And make sure you can relax this April. Talksport, the radio station which has that festive season all gift wrapped up on hand painted organza with a big pure silk diamond studded rosette. Lovely women! DAB Digital Radio, or alternatively, wrapped up in an old copy of White House magazine which you found under a hedge. Christmas is ruined! 1089 and 1053, medium wave. This is Talk Sport. Good evening, I'm Mike Dickin. This is Talk Sport. My guest is Richard Dawkins, not only the author of The God Delusion, also an evolutionary, evolutionary biologist and professor of zoology at Oxford. Uh, Mark joins us from Manchester. Mark, good evening. Uh, good evening, uh, Mike, and good evening, uh, Professor Dawkins. Good evening. Um, um, I've had some um, sort of scientific training. I'm trying to come at this from a, a sort of non-scriptural type of God approach, but I do have some belief in... Um, in that dreadful kind of thing, in quotes, something, if you like. That uh, I'll just give you a couple of analogies if you'd just like to comment on them. I remember once I used to work in an office and I uh, had to go to the archives occasionally and open these dusty things. But occasionally you find something like a paper mite, you know, moving along, something that was alive the size of a full stop, moving across a page. And I thought to myself, this paper mite has no idea about my existence. I mean, to, to it, I'm like a god. And so, in a sense, how can we, in a way, preclude the existence of something as greater than us as we are to the paper might, because our perception is limited? Um, and in a way, I think sometimes we are arrogant as, as man to think that we are the kind of the apex of, of evolution. But using that kind of analogy, um, you know, in, in Hamlet it says there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy, Horatio. And I think that um, if, if you take that a kind of example, um, there, there could be something that because of our limited perception, just as a paper might, um, you know, if I sort of shook the book, it would be like an earthquake for that paper might. And um, um, can, you, can you see yes. the kind of direction I'm coming from there? Yes, um, I think it's a, it's a persuasive analogy that um, we oughtn't to be arrogant and think that we know everything. One of the beauties of science, one of the beauties of the scientific worldview is precisely that it doesn't know everything and knows that it doesn't know everything and is humble about it. So I have no doubt at all that in, say, 500 years' time, science will uncover things so wonderful, so marvellous and so different from what we know that anybody today would be gobsmacked in exactly the same kind of way as, say, a medieval peasant would be by being confronted with, say, a Boeing 747 or a mobile phone today. So let's by all means be humble. What is not particularly likely, however, is that this wonderful thing in 500 years will just happen to be the god that the Christians or the Jews or the Muslims happen to have imagined. It'll be something far grander than that, mm -hmm. probably far more mysterious than that. Well, but I happen to agree with you on that. I mean, that, that, but to me, the, the, the analogies you gave us kind of technological things, but I'm talking about something that is actually living, but far greater than us. Just as, you know, going back to the, the paper mite thing, if you, if you forgive me doing that, that, that using that analogy, that there's no reason that, we, that something like that exists, that, that, that might, might sort of, um, through our evolution, well, we Mark, make Mark, can I just ask you, yes. when you think of God, yes. what picture do you get in your head? I don't, I don't, because I know, I know that, that, that um, if I could get a picture of God, I would have to, in a sense, be on the level of that kind of um, level of evolution. But I, through this analogy and through a sense that, that there is something miraculous in, uh, in, in quotes, if you like, um, as, as Professor Dawkins was saying there, that, that in time we will come across that we have no perception. We can't even begin to perceive what it will be like. But there is something, just as in a way I could create the world for that paper might by, you know, building it a sort of playground of paper in shapes and things, and he wouldn't know what was doing that to it. Well, I think that it's very likely that there will be aliens in um, outer space on other planets which will be so far advanced 
compared to us, Mm -hmm. that we would treat them as gods if we were ever to meet them. So I think that there, in a sense, are gods out there on other planets. What I don't think is that they just happened. I think if there are godlike beings, Mm -hmm. they will have come about by some process such as evolution. They will have come about late in the universe as the end product of an evolution-like process. They will not be the sort of thing that creates the universe, and I've given reasons for that in Chapter 4 of The God Delusion. I think they are good reasons, but I I thank you for your analogy, which is a a useful lesson in humility. Mark, we're we're overwhelmed with calls, so I'm going to limit you to that and and move on, but thank you very much for the call. Uh, We'll go to Yorkshire and hear from Chris. Chris, good evening, you're on TalkSport. Good evening. Um, I must admit, I I phoned, I heard your opening comment that if there was anybody who believed in God, please phone. Mm -hmm. So I I thought, well, I'll, I'll phone, I believe in God, and I've phoned in. I hadn't realized that Richard Dawkins was going to be on tonight, but nonetheless, um, I was going to ask, what, 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 what were you wanting folks, you know, when you asked them to phone in, what, what questions did you want to put to them? Well, really, the question I just asked Mark, what do you see in your mind when, when you think of God or when you pray? Where do you think he or it, she is? Okay, I guess, yeah, that, that, that is difficult in a way in that um, one hasn't seen God, so um, I, I perceive him as being a spiritual being uh, that exists throughout his universe, not just localized in one little corner. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, I perceive him as a spiritual being that, that is self-existent through the whole universe. And is he there for those who live in parts of the world where they don't believe in him because they've never heard of him? Is he there for them as well? Does he give them divine guidance, even though they don't know who the hell he is? Well, I, I, I would certainly, uh, as, as you know, I'm speaking from a Christian perspective. Mm. So, yes, I believe that God is, is in his whole universe. And, uh, and you know, the people are, are meant to seek after him. In fact, I, I think he's given us plenty of evidence of his, his existence just in the very things he has created. Such uh, as? Sorry. Such as what? Oh, sorry. I, I was just thinking just, just the wonder of creation. I mean, from the, the greater things of stars and planets and things to the very minute things at the bottom of the ocean. And uh, there were pictures in the newspaper just recently of some uh, incredible creatures, you know, in, in the depths of the ocean and some little shrimp that, uh, you know, live near boiling water and stuff like that. Uh, creation is just, is just marvelous. That, of course, is all explained by evolution in great detail. Um, it re- really, there's no excuse for using that kind of argument for the existence of God ever since 1859. Well, I, I would beg to differ there in that, um, you know, there, there, there are so many books on the market uh, these days uh, arguing very strongly in, in favor of, um, you know, evolution and creation. And, and certainly I've, I've read, a, you know, a little bit of a sprinkling of these. And, and I don't think the answer is as cut and, and dry as you, you like to make it out to be. OK. Thank you. So your belief is unshakable? You never question your belief? Oh, I, I, throughout life, I'm, I'm 55 now, and throughout life I've often uh, you know, sat and thought and, and, you know, about the things I've come to believe in. Uh, uh, faith is, is not unquestioning. Faith, faith does question. Faith does examine. And, and faith looks for, for facts to build upon. So, yes, I, 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 I have read books and I've read the opinions of, you know, the, the evolution view and those who are against evolution. So, yes, See, yes I, I, I am I, thinking about One this. of the questions I find unanswerable is, if there is a God, where was he when the tsunami happened? What was he doing? Had he gone for a cup of tea? I don't wish to be rude. No, but was he looking the other way? Did he miss that one or did he cause it? I, I realize what you're saying there, but, you know, people have also said, well, uh, take America, for instance. They've, you know, driven God out of, uh, out of so many things, and they do so many things that are wrong, and they never say, where is God there? But then the moment there is a, a worldwide catastrophe, then the world all suddenly says, where is God? But, but you know, where is God when, when, when people murder? And where is God when people... Well, indeed. Think? I mean, surely you're arguing with yourself here, because on the contrary to what you say, George Bush always claims that God is driving him. 
Yes, but when we when we come to things like like faith and religion, we 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 must realise that people profess things. It doesn't necessarily mean they are all consistent with what they profess. And and George Bush may at the moment not be the best example of someone who professes faith. But uh, there have been people who've lived in the world. Robert Moffat was a man who went to the, the land I come from, South Africa, and lived a most remarkable life amongst the the people of that nation and, and did remarkable, you know, works of kindness, of, of charity. No, and things. Nobody doubts that good people do good things, but that has nothing to do with God. No, no, it is. What I'm saying is Robert Moffat professed to be a Christian, George Bush professed to be a Christian, but we, at the end of the day, we look at the fruits and, you know, of a person's life. And that shows just to what extent their Christianity really affected their lives. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Gore. Richard, do you get the feeling, and, and it's one that I really find objectionable, in that if you say, I don't believe in God, you're all of a sudden, you, you're some sort of a, a murderer. You're, you're, you're some sort of a person without sensitivity, without feeling, without morals. Without... Well, I, I don't think our friend from South Africa is suggesting anything no, no. like that. But, but the feeling that I get from the tone of the conversations is that if you don't believe in God, there's something seriously wrong with you. Because well, there are people who, there certainly are people who, su who suggest that. But why don't we move on to another caller? Let's do that. Let's go to David, who's in Birmingham. David, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Hi. Uh, Professor Dawkin, my question to you, uh, I personally am an atheist and a humanist. Uh, I would like everyone listening tonight to the Mike Dickens show on Talk Sport Radio to go out next week before Christmas and buy a copy of New Scientist magazine in order to counter the fairy tales and legends of the Bible and the Koran. Well, uh, New Scientist would certainly be one thing they might buy. I might suggest they could go out and buy, buy a copy God of the God Delusion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, this, uh, this is, uh, David, is this, um, are you almost an evangelist for atheism? You're quite right. I mean, I don't have any shares in New Scientist. In fact, I don't have any shares whatsoever. I'm speaking mainly to counter the minority of people uh, who are uh, following in the uh, unbelievably in the highly educated people of England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, still following uh, Roman Catholic religion, Muslim religion, Church of England, fundamentalist Christian, as, as, as one of my own relatives is. Uh, and it appears to be, Professor Dawkin, something that is beyond rational, clear, logical thinking. Well, I think that is exactly what it is, as a matter of fact. I, I think you're perfectly right about that. It's, it is beyond rational thinking. But can we um, just tidy that up? What does that really mean, beyond rational thinking? Does that mean that people who believe in God are irrational? Well, I think that, that faith is something that you believe in spite of a lack of evidence. If there were evidence, then you wouldn't need faith. You'd believe in it because of the evidence. And so that's pretty much what faith means. It means belief in something where there is no evidence. And it's even thought to be a particular virtue to believe something. The, more, the, the, the less evidence there is, the more virtuous you are to believe it. OK, well, we'll take a moment there, and then we'll return and talk with Lawrence and Telford and all the others who follow. 0870420020 is the number. My guest is Professor Richard, Richard Dawkins. We're talking about the existence of God. His book says, The God Delusion. What do you say? This is Talk Sport. Ho, ho, yo, boys and girls, bad Santa, yeah, check this out. I've ditched this sleigh, yeah, it was well 80s, man. And I've bagged myself this fly, new Aston Martin V8 Vantage, thanks to Talk Sport's special hard competition. Rudolph is going to be well vexed, isn't he? You two could be impressing the ladies and a gleaming new Aston Martin V8 Vantage by entering Talk Sport's Howlow Reverse Auction, where the lowest unique bid at the end of the auction wins. Text WIN followed by your bid in pence to treble 821. Bidding is open till 5 p.m. on December 27. Bidders must be 16 or over. Bids cost £1.50 plus normal text charges. See TalkSport.net for terms and conditions. Howlow is a syndicated promotion. Thank you. If your Christmas wish is to tick more presents off your list without getting ticked off by wasting time, you're in luck. At Argos, you can use our quick pay kiosks to pay for your goodies, then go straight to the collection point to pick them up. Don't Christmas shop for it. Argos it. Free 
Why is everyone dumping their radiators? They've all got polyplum overlay. Polyplum overlay from Polypipe is a floor heating system that goes over your existing floor, connects to your heating system, providing more wall space in kitchens, bathrooms, loft conversions, extensions, and conservatories. Polyplum overlay, a complete floor heating system from Polypipe. Find a local installer at freeyourwalls.com or call 08450-944-944 for details. All inquiries go into a free prize draw for a flat screen TV. Conditions apply. When I get my own house... I'm going to have games room with a, a little blackboard to keep score and chalk on a string. And the lounge will be full of fat, squishy sofas with cushions covering the floor. There'll be little shells on the tiles in the bathroom that I collected from the beach. And the doorbell will play the final countdown. Maybe it's time to put your plans into action. Abbey will help you work out how much you can afford to borrow. And we could even lend you up to five times your salary, making it easier for you to get on the property ladder. Call 0800 808080, log on to abbey.com, or visit your local branch for details. Abbey. More ideas for your money. Conditions apply. Talk on 1089 and 1053 AM. And the most wonderful, the most beautiful DAB Digital Radio Talk Sport. Good evening, I'm Mike Nickin. 08704 202020 is our number. My, professor, my, my guest is Professor Richard Dawkins. We're talking about, well, partly his book, The God Delusion. Also, uh, at this time of the year, um, probably not too wise to profess that you don't have a belief in God, so I thought we'd try it. Uh, Lawrence is in Telford. Lawrence, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Good evening, Mr. Dickin. How are you? My house uh, morning question. Morning question. Mm. Um, I do uh, research into the Bible. Jesus Christ talks about the end of the world, which I think is a very significant event. He talks about the Great Tribulation, and we should try and escape it if we can. The Great Tribulation is in Matthew 24. It's Matthew 24:15, and the Great the, there's a, there's a reference back to the Book of Daniel, which is Daniel 11:31, and if you track you can pick up a countdown to the end of the world, which starts at Daniel 11.13, which is Stalin, the king of the north in code. The Bible is written basically in code, and it's up to intelligent people to try to interpret it. Verse 14 is the robbers of thy people who are the Nazis. Verse 15 goes with the chosen people who are the SS. Then it comes on to verse 16, who is Churchill, who stands in the glorious land, which by his hand is consumed, and was helped out by Leesland. We then jump to uh, President Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, who figure in verse 17. He turns into a lame duck president. Me. Then goes yeah, but this, this, this is a prediction of a book that was written, what, 600, 700 years ago? 536 B.C. Right. I thought that the programs like this had some sort of filtering to keep nutcases off them. Isn't there, isn't there some sort of filter? There is a filter, yes. Um, it clearly um, decided that this was a valid point of view. Um, what, when is the end of the world then, Lawrence? Uh, um, it's in the book of Revelation. Uh, can you give me the date? Uh, no, it's a secret. Ah, oh, yeah, thanks. Well, it would be, of course. Um, Colin is in Leeds. Colin, good evening, you're on Talk Sport. Hi there. I was, I'd just like to say that I believe in God, and I'm schizophrenic. Does that, does that mean my belief is a delusion just because of my illness? Like Richard Dawkins, Dawkins says about, um... The fact that you're schizophrenic has nothing whatever to do with your belief in, in God. But belief in God, I believe, is a delusion, but it's purely coincidental that you happen to be schizophrenic. Right. Why, why did you ask the question? Because I, I was worried about my beliefs and the thoughts I have in my mind. Uh, I, I, I guess it was a worry. What do you worry about? The fact that you don't want to believe, and yet something no, leads I, no, you to it. No, I, I do believe. Right. I know I believe. Because hmm. I always profess and... Um, tell people about God and stuff like that, you know, it's one of my main interests is religion. But it tends to be that schizophrenics delve into religion a lot more so than other people. So is it, because I have some doubts in my mind about whether it, it is a delusion in itself. 
Is it a prop for you? Is it like a stick to lean on? Something that you can always rely on that will be there when all other things seem to fail you in your in your illness? No, um, it's just something that I really believe in. Okay. Colin, as uh, Richard explained, the delusion has nothing to do with your, your illness. Uh, let's see what Alan in Coventry has to say, because I think it's somewhat different. Alan, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Good evening, Mike. Yes, sir. Um, first, uh, thank you for the many shows uh, I've listened to you. I don't always agree with you, but I do respect your forensic approach to many issues. Um, Mike, I take issue on the uh, matter of atheism. I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. But I understand where, I try to understand where you're coming from, and your colleague, your speaker. Um, my point to you and all atheists out there, I, I think you're basically all foolish. And why? You prove to me that God doesn't exist. How can you maintain sci scientifically uh, your position unless you can disprove scientifically the existence of God. Right. Do you, do you believe in Zeus and Apollo and No, I'm Thor? asking you. No, I'm asking, I'm, you. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. Yeah. There have been hundreds of gods that people have believed in, and let's just take Zeus or let's just take Apollo or Thor with his hammer. Can you prove that Thor with his hammer doesn't exist? No, you can't. So does that... Why, does the, why then do you challenge me to disprove the existence of your God? It's just your God. No, but, you, but what you're saying, you're saying that people who believe in God are deluding themselves. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not saying that uh, people who believe in God are, are, are necessarily basing that on, on, on evidential, uh, or have an evidential basis, but uh, neither do you have an evidential basis for your atheism. You, you surely, scientifically, and the chap who phoned in about you scientists, surely to, to propagate atheism, you have to have a scientific basis that God doesn't exist. Well, I think I, I think I do have it, but before going on to that, I just wanted to point out to you that I presume you don't believe in the flying spaghetti monster. I presume you don't believe in pink unicorns. I presume you don't believe in Thor with his hammer, but you can't disprove any of them. So the mere fact that you cannot disprove something is no reason to believe that it does exist. Um, if, if something um, can be neither proved one way or the other, then surely we have to keep an open mind. Well, I have an open mind about Thor with his hammer and about invisible pink unicorns, I'm do you? I'm not saying I don't. Okay. I'm asking you, do you have an open mind that God may exist? Sure I Mike do. Mike Dickin and the gentleman who phoned in. If, you, would read, you, if you read my book, you would see that I have an open mind. Well, I, I, I'm sorry I'm very busy. I haven't got time. But I'm not saying I wouldn't have interest in it if I had the time. Yes. Um, uh, can you, uh, surely, uh, I mean, how can you disagree with what I'm saying? That, that you, surely you have to be able to disprove uh, the, the, uh, God's existence. To be Didn't able you to understand say, a word I was saying about Thor with his hammer? Um, Do you have to be able to disprove Thor with his hammer? I can say that I don't believe in Thor with his hammer, but if someone can prove to me that... that um, it, I mean, there are some things that, that, that don't really have a great deal of evidential basis. Surely the, the, the possibility that God exists in, 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 I think, well, from my point of view, the Christian... Uh, uh, but why the Christian it, 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 How do you decide it, which God to, let, that you're talking talk about? about? Evidence. Let's talk about evidence. Uh, Mike Dickin uh, mentioned the tsunami. Good point. Uh, uh, again, it was, it's, one of, it's one of a million, Scott. Yes. But there are also many, many, many uh, uh, in, in existence, the fantastic integrity of nature. How do you explain, for example, scientifically, the ongoing uh, reproductive uh, capacity that, that within uh, a newborn child is a, uh, the potential for a, a second newborn child within that child is a further newborn child. Well, as it happens, you've, you've hit upon the, the, the basis for Darwinian evolution. That's how I would explain it. Hmm. Um, e evolution is the answer. You, you can't prove a negative. Uh, the point you're making is, is, is wrong simply because you cannot prove a negative. You can prove a positive. You show me a God, and that's a positive. I can't show you there isn't a God, because I wouldn't know where to look. 
surely the I, I, I can't agree with you. Surely the most you can say is I'm agnostic. That I could agree with. But yes, I can't so agree with someone who says I'm an atheist. I, I don't. There is not a god. Okay, I'm agnostic about that, and I'm agnostic about pink unicorns and the flying spaghetti monster. But you're open. To, you're open to the to the possibility that there might be a god. Yes, and are you open to the possibility that there might be Thor with his hammer and an invisible pink unicorn? Uh, I've got to work my head round that one, but, um... Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> well... We'll leave you to uh, to do that. It'd be an interesting result okay. if at some point you could perhaps let us know, because we could then do a programme. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the spaghetti monster, because it has to be a personal thing of mine, but I will talk about pink unicorns. Uh, <laughs> Ken is in the Highlands somewhere. Ken, good evening, you're on Talk Sport. Good evening, Mike, and good evening, Richard. I'd first like to say to you both that Jesus loves you. Thank and you. I would, I would like to tell you the benefits of being a Christian. Right. This, this is experiential knowledge, Richard, by the way. Twenty-eight years ago, I was delivered from the power of alcohol and the power of sin. Oh, just like George Bush. A miracle, yes. Yeah. I, was, I received healing after the heart attack. Uh, during the heart attack, Jesus came and supported me in that experience, a wonderful supernatural experience with God. Now, as a human being today, I have security in Christ, not in religion. I've got a wonderful purpose in my life, Richard. I've got a new disposition by the grace of God. I've got new thoughts, a new direction in life, a clean heart, joy in my heart through knowledge of Christ. And what, what a wonderful experience. You, you, you speak of this knowledge as though it was first-hand. You actually met, did you? Yes. Right. Now, I've got a couple of questions for Richard. Oh, please, sir. In regard to evolution now, Richard, ev the evolutionist belief is... A the evolutionist doctrines, Richard, are actually a belief system and are built upon two pillars which you know about. The first pillar is nothing, nothing produced everything, which is totally impossible. And you also believe that dead matter produced life. Now, for you to believe that, that is a faith system. You have no proof. Well, there is an enormous amount of evidence for evolution. There are shelf miles of books on it. Um, I can only suggest that you have a look at an elementary textbook of biology and learn something from it. Did nothing produce everything? <laughs> um, well... Could you, could you, for those of us that aren't as well-versed in the matter as you, could you explain the question for, for the rest of us? The, quest the question I was right. The, the evolutionists believe that billions of years ago there was no nothing, a nothingness. There was nothing at all. And out of that nothing produced some amazing, amazing explosion. Well, if there was nothing at all, was there a God? God has always been Mike. Is it? Well, there wasn't nothing then, was there? No, no. The Bible says very clearly there's a creator, Mike. All right. D design demands a designer, surely. Information right. demands a source. What about DNA, Richard? Where did the DNA, where did the information come to, come from in your DNA when you were conceived in your mother's womb, Richard? There was an impact of information into your cell. Where did that information well, come from? it came from evolution. I really can only say that you do need to go away and read a book. You don't know what you're talking about. I've written eight books on the subject. I do know what I'm talking about. There isn't time to spell it out in a sound bite. It, it is a complicated story, and it is a, actually a very interesting and fascinating story. You don't need to read eight books. Just one book would do, but do read something, because y you might actually be interested in it. You might actually understand it, and thank you very much for the call. I wish you'd take a moment, because we have to do those things. Um, I don't believe it, and I'm told to do it. <coughs> oh, it's 704 is the number. Talk to board. It's as Christmassy as huge credit card debt and yellow snow. The Talk Sport Panto 2006. Cinder Beaky. Where is that girl? My helmet needs a polish. With songs. We want to eat cheese. And laughter. I need a woman. And jokes, old and new. Try supporting Charlton. That should take your mind off it. Starring Larry Grayson as Graham Beecroft. They're throwing a party, but I haven't been invited. Rabsy Nesbitt as Alan Brazil. My homebrew brings all the boys to the yard. I've got Bucky and Stella Artois. Talk sports, no expense spent Christmas spectacular. Cinder Beaky. Starts next Monday on the sports breakfast and continues throughout the week. Christmas on Talk Sport. It's a pantomime. Oh, no. Shut it!
Hillstorm, the radio station which likes a bit of stuffing at Christmas. A Norfolk turkey! Gobble, 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 talk sport. Good evening, I'm Mike Dickin. This is Talk Sport. My guest in this hour of the program is Professor Richard Dawkins, who is the author of, among other things, The God Delusion. He is also a professor at Oxford University. And we have on the line from France now, David. Whereabouts in France are you, David? Uh, in Toulouse. Uh huh. Good evening and welcome. Your, your question or your, your remark is? Well, it was to do with your point that you made about, uh, you know, the age old question, if there's a God, why does he let suffering happen? You're like, this is army, the tsunami was your example. It was, yes, it's, it's a small point, but it, it, it helps me, yes. Yeah. Well, it was just, uh, trying to answer that, um, trying to get, to, I think it's a question of mixed assumptions, in that, in the first part of the question, the hypothesis is that God exists, because obviously that's to do with the question, so we must accept that in the, in the parameters of this question, God does exist. So if God exists, why does he let suffering happen? Mm. Well, if we're assuming at the start that God exists, then at the end God still does exist, so therefore it presumes this sort of afterlife or some form of afterlife, and therefore it puts human life into a different perspective. So I think it's mixing assumptions slightly to to trying to castigate God for letting something happen. When no, it wasn't letting it happen. If God controls all things in heaven and earth, as we are told he does by those who believe in him, uh, then he caused the tsunami. Well, yeah, sure. So, yeah. why did he do that? Well, because he's obviously, if, if he exists again, because obviously that's the assumption, then he's going to be looking at everything from a vastly different perspective, because human life is not just all there is. So it might, to us, to our perspective here, it might seem a tragedy. Well, it is a tragedy, obviously, a human tragedy. But if we are to look at things from the more spiritual, long-term perspective, he's not going to be seeing things in the same light. So he's going to be saying, yeah, I know you don't like it, but you are now dead and you've come back to me and this is why it had to happen. I mean, I'm not saying that is the answer. I'm just trying to explain why the question is a bit of a mixture of assumptions. It, it, it's quite, the question was quite simply, if there is a God who cares and loves for us all, loves us all and cares for us all, and that's our best interests at heart. Mm-hmm. Why do people die in such d- desperate circumstances? Why doesn't he just throw the switch? Because, well, the, the, the answer to that would be because there are lessons to be learned from our lives mm. in a longer perspective. I mean, that's, that's the answer. I'm not saying whether I believe in it or not. I'm just saying logically that would be the answer. Because you're looking at it from a spiritual perspective, so you've got to answer it from a spiritual perspective. If, on the other hand, then you say, well, God does not exist, well, then obviously you can't create any disasters at all, so that negates the question again. Well, it negates the question in my mind, because as far as I'm concerned, God doesn't exist, so I, it never even occurs to me to put it into a different perspective. Thank you for the call. Okay. Let's go to Perth and David. David, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Good evening. Uh, Now, I'm not an educated person, and I hope my question is not too simplistic. I left school at 13 and went to work in farms. However, I am now 79 and a little experience of life. But the question I'd I'd like to ask a a brilliant scholar like Professor Richard Dawkins would be, uh, I I agree with him, you see, but I'd like to ask him this. If God does exist and he created the world and all things in it, and he's a merciful God, why would he put humans on this earth, and also deadly insects like the mosquito, which I understand, particularly in tropical countries, has killed thousands of children and adults down through the ages. It Mm. just seems so ridiculous. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, obviously, that's a question that should be put to a religious person. Um, Since I'm not a religious person, I believe that humans and mosquitoes are the end product of the evolutionary process, which is exceedingly well understood, as indeed is the process that causes tsunamis. It's caused by a a shift in tectonic plates. We are coming... I mean, these are all phenomena which are very well understood. Mosquitoes exist despite their terrifying uh, capacity to carry disease for us. Mosquitoes exist because Darwinian natural selection has favored mosquitoes and their ancestors in the past and has also favored the malarial parasite that they, that they carry. Uh, the malarial parasite does its job very well. Mosquitoes do their job very well, their job being quite simply to survive and pass on their own genes. So I can easily see that somebody who believes in God does have a problem to explain all the unpleasant things in the world, but as an, as an atheist, we have our explanation, and it is, in this case, evolution. 
Thank you very much for the call. Um, a call that um, claims that God has been discovered may be, in your opinion, Richard, um, uh, from someone who's... Well, let's see. Um, Diane in London says that we, we know where God is. Is that right, Diane? Oh, yeah, Mike. Can I also, before I finish, uh, say something about the suffering? I'd like to try and answer that. Yeah, but can we, can we start with your first point sure, here? Sure. Yeah. Um, scientists have found God, and I would have thought that Professor Dawking would know this, um, in the sense that physicists have discovered the unified field of all the laws of nature that govern the universe as being at the basis of the universe, not as a person, but as an impersonal state of being or consciousness. And if you look around at the order in the universe, the movement of the planets and growth of plants and so on, there's clearly intelligence at work. It's not random. And that same intelligence can be found within our own minds. Well, there are all sorts of contradictions there. Um, scientists are indeed searching for a grand unified theory, and, with, and my great hope is that they will discover it. You can, of course, give the name God, if you wish, to that grand unified theory, but that's very different from saying that it's conscious intelligence. There is absolutely no evidence whatever for any kind of conscious intelligence. What you're talking about is a grand unified theory which might be given the name God, and you're at liberty to give it a name like that. Einstein might have done the same, but Einstein was adamant that he did not believe in any kind of personal intelligence, any kind of personal God. The point is, I think, that if you have found the field of the universe, the source of the universe, the source of all the laws of nature, even though scientists cannot prove it because it's transcendental, they've reached the limits, you then have to go to a um, subjective way of proving it, and that can be found within our own minds, within our own intelligence, because what people find when they transcend is that they are contacting that same um, absolute field of transcendental intelligence, which is also objective to scientists. On the subjective level, you can prove it by going within. You cannot prove it scientifically, I accept that. Do we have to go and see a little man sitting on um, uh, something cross-legged playing yeah, a sitar? You can come to anybody like myself who can teach transcending. Mm. There is a technique for teaching the mind to go inward to the source of intelligence, which is the same intelligence that governs the universe, and that same intelligence enables us to fly. Ah, uh, this is the yogic coffee. flying, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, because which I witnessed this... first hand, which was people bouncing up and down on a mattress. That's the first stage, Mike. You right. see, because we have this potential to fly and can can develop the ability to fly because we have this power of the universe within our own you, mind. You can fly, can you? Have, have you, yes, have you yes, flown? Yes, but only at the hopping stage. And that's You're the at the hopping stage. stage. Have you seen anybody fly? Well, yes, in the sense of the hopping stage, but when we're all... How long is it going to take before it, we get airborne? <laughs> you see, I, I witnessed this 30 years ago, um, and it doesn't seem to progress very far. No, Mike, that's because you're not doing it and the professor's not doing it, uh, because we're in one field of consciousness, like a whole ocean. Yeah. If so many waves on the ocean are still, um, shall we say, impure, I don't like to use that word, no, no, no. but if just a few of the waves are pure water and the rest are polluted in some way, then you won't have much very, very pure water around. Okay, good Dan, analogy, thank you very much. No, it's very, very kind of you to call. Um, I did actually witness this in, I think it was in Birmingham, uh, and I was very impressed, but I could actually bounce higher than they could, which upset them a touch. We won't pursue that. John T is in Surrey. John T, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Hi right there. Um, yeah, this is uh, yeah, a question for Richard, really. I've been listening to a lot of your lectures, um, especially in America. Oh, what, on, on, on the website? Yes, on the website. Uh, RichardDawkins.net. Yeah, you, um, RichardDawkins.net as yeah. well. Um, I don't know if you saw the God, God's inbox. Um, Yes, that was lovely. Of day, which is wonderful. Very funny, yeah. Um, anyway, um, I've noticed that when you, uh, basically when people sort of turn around and actually start listening to you, and especially Christians, um, I was, well, I'm a Christian myself, um, but a lot of them say, well, if you're right, Richard, um, you know, what's the point in, uh, in, in life and living, to which you turn around quite rightly and say, um, well, it's about living for the moment, it's about caring, it's about loving people around you, it's about, um, uh, you know, looking at the beautiful world around you, but I wonder, do, do you often feel responsible, perhaps, that you're taking away such a uh, structured belief system um, in society? I wouldn't wish to uh, cause anybody great 
distress. Um, but I do think that if you take a rational scientific view of life, you soon realize that the purpose that your life has is the purpose that you give it. It's up to you to give your life a purpose. And people who have happy lives tend to be people who succeed in giving themselves purposes. People who think that, the, that this life is only a prelude to another life are going to die and, th and that's going to be the end of it. And that's very sad because it means that they probably will not have lived this life as fully as they would have done if they'd realized that this was it. And you better make the most of it. This is it. This is the only life you're ever going to get. And you might as well make the most of it. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful place to be, this planet. We are extremely fortunate to be alive. The odds against your existing are staggeringly high. Consider yourself quite astonishingly fortunate to be alive. Make the most of it. Live life to the full, because it's the only life you're ever going to get. Thank you very much, Van. I think we have to leave it there, as your time is, is beating us. Thank you very much for joining us. Just to pursue the point you were making finally, when people say to me, oh, well, of course, I'm off to a better life ultimately, and I'm going to wherever they think they're going, I don't very often say it, but I have on occasion to say, well, why don't you go now? <laughs> If it's that damn good, you know, why are you hanging around here? And there doesn't seem to be much of an answer to that. No, indeed. You're Everybody right. clings to life as dearly as they can, yeah. even though they think, or many think, yeah. they're going on to a better place later on, which, of course, they're not, which is unfortunate. Uh, can I just mention, um, I, I've, I've got your book, uh, The God Delusion. Are, are most of your books on the same topic? No. Um, most of my books are on evolution. All right. Um, this is the this is the only book that's actually about about God. Mm. And you also mentioned to our last caller, um, Richard, Richard Dawkins dot net. Richard which, Dawkins dot net. And, and you run a sort of a seminar on there, do you? Well, it's a lot. Of, there's a lot of stuff there. It's a it's a wonderful site. I I don't run it, so I can say that. Mm. Um, <laughs> and it has lots and lots of material. It has lots of reviews of the God delusion. Many of them critical. Lots of people write in 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 response. So it's a it's a wonderful wonderful, flourishing community, richarddawkins.net. Thank you very much for your time this evening, and, and may I wish you a happy Christmas. And the same to you. <laughs> Thank you very much <laughs> indeed. As uh, Professor Richard Dawkins, evolutionary biologist, I said, Professor of Zoology at Oxford, and the author of The God Delusion. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to continue talking about that, but I'm afraid without educated Richard Dawkins, you can continue to talk with the ignorant me. But there are also one or two other topics we might approach in the next couple of hours. This is Talk Sport. The, the reference that proves the existence of God, because you said there are many scientific statements within the book that prove the existence of God. You have yet to give me any whatsoever. Well, the scientific proof. Yes, yeah, so you said. I have just told you you said that. You don't okay, need to repeat it one, again. Just one, give me that. one. Just give me one of them. Well, I'm telling you the example. One example of scientific well, proof. Uh, well, no. One example. Hello? Hello. Yeah, sorry. One example is the development of the embryo. Mm. Right? How is someone supposed to know that over 1,400 years ago? It's quite detailed. In the Quran, that's one example. Fine, Another thank you very much. Uh, that, that's uh, that's me. Thank you very much. My argument's blown out of the water completely. Um, uh, Mark is in Dover. Mark, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Evening. Evening. How are you? My health's not in question. Mark, what's on your mind? Uh, it was actually the Diana subject that you uh, brought up previously. Mm hmm. Uh, wasn't so much on the whole God front, although your last conversation was quite interesting, I must admit. Um, why don't we all let her just rest? It's been, what, nine years? Well, she, she, as far as I'm concerned, she's been dead nine years. She's, she is resting. Well, that's right, yeah, but it, it's, uh, it's in the papers every other week, isn't it? Yes, so? Well, I thought that was your issue. <clears throat> no. Is well, it yours? No, that was your issue, wasn't no, it? No, well, what's your issue, then? My issue is why don't we let her rest? Well, why should we? Because she's dead. Yes, uh, we, don't we talk about dead people? Uh, I wouldn't appreciate it if you talked about my dead mother. You wouldn't? No. Okay, well, we probably won't. I think you're safe from that, so we'll move on swiftly to Tim, who's in Warwickshire. Tim, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Oh, good evening, Mike. Um, I, I, I can't say any, any more than, say, Kenneth Highlands said, or any other sort of Christian believer comes on. I, I think it wouldn't be, wouldn't be profitable, but... I, 
surely there's one question that, that must uh, bug the professor, and perhaps yourself, mm. when you think that, you, you know, we all think we're pretty clever people, don't we? But how does he, how does he, does he not think about his peers who do believe in Jesus Christ? What does, what does he think about people like them? And they, they may be well, I can't better. speak for Richard Dawkins. I know you can't speak. I do dearly wish he was still here, but it's just, it, it, I, I think it's a question that is probably more up, uppermost in his mind than perhaps any, a, a, any other sort of... Question. I would doubt if it bothers him at all. I mean, you're talking about your peers and, and peers, what yeah. they believe. I mean, His peers, yeah. Well, anyone's peers, really. Um, if you believe that you're different to them... Uh, and you believe something different to what they believe, uh, does that define you as a human being? Because I, 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 think, I think that the professor believes what... what well, you what, can't what, say what you think he believes, and he's not here to answer himself, and I'm certainly not going to speak on his behalf. Well, I think... Well, well let's just suggest that he believes what he believes, because he, he thinks he's got some sort of scientific knowledge. Which but he, he has got to, scientific which, knowledge. He doesn't yes, think he has. He has. Oh. He, he's, a, he's a professor of zoology and an evolutionary biologist. Sure, sure. Well, what... what all I'm saying is, I wish he was here to, so he could say, oh, w w w answer the question. What, how, how did he feel about those people I in, his, in his field who, who do believe that Jesus Christ is, is, is the, the, uh, the Son of God and they say, what does he think about that? That's what I would have asked him. That's all well, I, 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 I he, clearly, clearly, anyone who has a belief such as he has, and I have, and you have, you think anybody that thinks differently to you is simply wrong. Yeah, but there must be reasons why they're wrong. And, and uh, obviously, he, 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 what I've got from the last hour is that he believes he is right because he is able to explain things in a scientific way. Because his analytical process leads him to that belief. If that is a belief, and it, with me, it's, uh, uh, which is not such a, uh, uh, an intellectual approach, maybe, it, it is quite simply that I, I, I know in my own mind that there couldn't possibly be the creature, the person, the the whatever it may be, that people worship and call God. It just, to me, it's quite laughable, but I don't want to laugh at you or anyone else that has that belief. Although, I must say, when people profess such a deep belief that they are defined by their religion, their lives are entirely devoted to their religion, I do wonder if they would benefit from a little help sometimes. Psychiatric help. This is Talk Sport. Think you know sport? Then take the Talk Sport Challenge with the new interactive quiz DVD hosted by Mike Hawkey Parry. With over 2,000 questions, hundreds of multimedia features, plus single and team player functions, the Talk Sport Challenge quiz DVD is the ultimate in super sofa based fun. A seriously sport brain fan. Take the Talk Sport Challenge with the new interactive quiz DVD. Mental! Available 20th of November from all major DVD retailers. And some pants ones as well. See talksport.net for details. When your van's a big part of your working life, it's nice to know that Norwich Union Direct work as hard as you do. One of their van insurance experts worked out the cover I needed over the phone. No form filling, and I got a great quote. Their 24-7 claims line's great, too. In fact, it's midnight now, and I'm calling to let them know I've had an accident. For van insurance with up to 70% no claims discount, find out why with a choice of the professional and call Norwich Union Direct on 08000 560 or visit norwichunion.com forward slash van. Insurer standard terms and conditions apply. No claims discount applies to the risk element of the premium only. Cover not available in Northern Ireland. Thursday, and the Satanta staff are brainstorming taglines for the new Satanta Golf Channel. How about Sky Sports has lost the USPGA Golf? To the point, but not exactly brimming with wit. Colin, uh, do you follow the USPGA Tour? Better follow it to Satanta then. That I like. Or what about the USPGA Tour is cancelled? What? For Sky Sports subscribers. Oh, that's clever, Debbie. Who needs an advertising agency? Satanta Golf's exclusively live coverage of the USPGA Tour starts January the 8th. Get Satanta. Call 08700 55 66 77 or visit satanta.com. And he's scored! This man is a legend! He's past his peak. He's the star of the team! His transfer fee could buy me two new players. He's clinched their place in the final. The midfield got us through the early rounds. Stop thinking like a fan. Start thinking like a manager. Football Manager 2007, out now on PC and Mac.
Talks ball. The radio station for blokes who don't raise their gift expectations much anymore. There's no Christmas in the army, Captain. On Angela Lansbury in a cheeky, revealing, sexy, cut-off Santa top, fetching hat and nothing else. Folks, I have an announcement to make. DAB Digital Radio, or alternatively, a pair of white socks, a gun rack, and one of those singing fish. How horrible our Christmas will be. 1089 and 1053 medium wave. This is Talk Sport. Good evening, I'm Mike Dickin. This is Talk Sport. One of my concerns about conversations such as this is that we will begin to try and define each other by our beliefs, whatever they may be, as though our beliefs in Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Sikhism, Hinduism, Scientology, the lot that keep knocking your door, I can't remember their name, um, and, and atheism uh, and others, We'll all say, well, you're defined by that. Well, hopefully you're not. But if you go back to when you were a child, three, four years old, just beginning to get to grips with the language, and you're told that if you believe in this person, God, or Mohammed, or Mandela, or the other side, um, you, you will be well looked after all your life, be good and abide by his rules, and nothing nasty will ever happen to you. You're going to say, well, I'll have a bit of that, please. Yeah, I'll join. Uh, sign me up immediately. Like you do for Father Christmas. Because if you're told, if you're good all year, then Father Christmas will come and bring you lots of presents. And when he did, you thought, well, so he does exist, and I was good, and I got presents. So I'll, I'll do what God says, and um, I'll, be, I'll be well looked after all my life. But then you get a little bit older and you think, way, well, hey, hang on, there can't be a Father Christmas. That's impossible. How could he get around all those houses, even in one street, on the same night of the year? Never mind one town, one county, one country, one continent, one world. And so, logically, rationally, you come to the conclusion, there isn't a Father Christmas. A lot of people come to the same conclusion that there isn't a God, for very similar reasons. But not all do. 08704202020 is our number. Mary is in Somerset. Mary, good evening, you're on Talk Sport. Oh, good evening, Mike. Um, I haven't got any complicated theories about any of this. Uh, I just know, I mean, I'm getting on a bit, you know, in my 70s, but I have learned that I can't live without love. And I'm not going to divide love up into all these different kinds, because I've heard all the theories about that. Mm. But I know that I personally can't live without it. You know, whether it's just a smile on the street or my daughter or whatever. No, what, is this anything to do with religion or God? Well, everything to do with religion, oh, is from it? my point of view. Oh, right. um, well, you know, uh, there are those who will say, well, God is love. Whether that's true or not, it's up to you what you think. Mm. But... Um, that would make a lot more sense to me than anything else. You see, I'm, I, I, similarly, I think we're probably all saying the same thing. Well, I can't live without love either. Um, but I don't see any reason to believe in God because of that. Well, uh, no, but uh, the next question you let you, that from that comes on, well, well, what is love? And, oh, boy, have I heard a few theories about that. And I don't like it being split up by all the would-be know-alls, because I don't think... No, no, but, I mean, I'm knows. still... I'm, I'm, I'm not being funny here, but I still don't... And I, I, it, it has no bearing on our conversation with regard to God. But it has every bearing on our conversation. Can you show me how? Tell me how. Well, if you take the premise, as some do... The what? I would... Take the what? The, the simple statement, God is love. You don't have to believe that. I do, but you don't have to. No. But, I mean, it's a different... If you just let the concept of this business about what is love, and I like that, and I need it, that is something... And you can't say what it is. Okay, so if by any chance God is love, then that opens a few more queries, doesn't it? Well, it certainly does for me, uh, because if you really believe that that is uh, something on which you can sort of catch on, cash in, then what about those people who who utterly and absolutely believe in God and who are plagued by illness and disease and unnecessary and unpleasant things all their life? Doesn't he love them as much as he loves you? 
Well, I said at the beginning that I haven't no, got I'm, any No, it's a serious question. Theory. No, it's not a fancy theory. Well, I mean, I don't, the, the answer is, Mike, I don't know. I'm not God, am I? No, no, but if, if God is love, and I'm just questioning your, your theory I here. I mean, yes. Um, if God is love, why does he make or allow people to suffer that truly believe in him 100%? Well, take the example of the mother who takes a baby to have its inoculations. It hurts, the baby squeals, looks up and thinks, you know, doesn't think much of that. Mm. This is the person who's supposed to love me. I'm sure it doesn't actually think that, but that's a kind of simple example of it. We don't know. We don't know how it all works, do we? No, but we know if you're made ill and you're dying of some incurable disease and you're still proclaiming your love of God, that he isn't listening, is he? Is he? Well, it looks like that. It does, doesn't I, it? I don't, I, don't, I don't actually think that. No, you don't want to think that because no, you're very comfortable no, with no, the no, simple no. statement that God no, is love. Don't, don't put words into my mouth. Well, you, I'm not. Fair. That's what no. you said, isn't it? You said you're very happy. You don't, want any, you don't want any theories. You just want to believe that God is love. No, I didn't say I don't want to have any theories. I said I haven't got any because mm. the older I get, the more I realise that the less I know. I've heard a lot of the theories. I'm sure you have too. All I know is this one fact that love is a real big mystery. Don't ask me what it is. But it is. I mean, I certain, I mean, certainly anybody to explain love is doing well. Thank you, Mary, for the call. Um, but it has nothing to do with God. Uh, and I don't think anybody listening to this program, anybody on the planet, would say they don't want to be loved. Um, maybe one or two would, but I can't think of any. There are quite a lot who don't seem to be loved very much. And there are a hell of a lot who claim to love God with all their heart and mind and body and everything else, who suffer daily from tragedy and terrible illness and disease. And they still go on proclaiming their love of God. But if God dare let them suffer like that, where is the love? Well, of course, it's not where is the love, it's where is the God? There isn't one. Oh, it's 704-2020-2020 is our telephone number. Um, having said that, I've just been struck by some sort of intervention because my screen has uh, suddenly let me down, so I shall have to ask one of my colleagues to tell me where Mark in Hertfordshire is. I'm always in Hertfordshire, that'll do. Mark, good evening, you're on Talk Sport. Yeah, hello, Mike. Hi. Uh, yeah, um, I've just had a really sort of um, idea that maybe you don't have to actually see something to believe in it. You can actually believe in it without seeing it. Yes, that's probably true. Um, because mythology states, and uh, as you know, you, you see pictures uh, in mythology of like four with his hammer. So you know. He's, you see he's, pictures he's, of what? You see pictures in mythology. Yes. Of like four with his hammer, so you know he exists. Yes. Uh, you've seen pictures of Jesus, so you know he, he exists. Yes. Uh, but you can't actually prove um, that you can see a picture of God. So. Mm, well, you do see pictures of God in, in religious texts and Bibles. Yeah, and uh, but only in, only in that like context. That. You don't actually see um, what you would call... So you what think that if God. somebody's done a drawing of someone, something, some object, then that object must exist? Yeah, but only only as a material object. It, it, you're not it doesn't need to exist at all. It's in your mind. Exactly. So what you what you actually seeing? You're seeing what you want to believe. The point is what? I'm sorry, you confuse me. Well, you don't actually have to see something, okay, to believe in it. You can have a belief without actually seeing it. You don't actually have to. Did, see did anybody say anything other than that then? It says, I mean, you sound as though you're proposing an argument, as though somebody had said that wasn't true. But nobody said that. No, but that, that's, that's, the, that's the point I'm trying to make. That no, the point, the point you're making is not necessary because nobody has said you have to see something to believe in it. Well, that, that, that's, that's correct. But you no, can, nobody has said that. No, I, I, never, I never said they have. No, I, so why are you telling us that you don't need to see something to believe in it? Well, because if you, if you believe in something strongly enough, yeah, you, you don't need someone else to tell you what it actually looks like. No. Thank you, I'm sure. No, I'll have a, I'll mull over that for a while. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, maybe I won't. Uh, Oliver is in Latin in Essex. Oliver. Yeah, Mike, um, I'd just like to say, the reason why I believe in God is because 
the reproductive system is so intricate and like like how it like performs a firstly formed baby there must be some sort of external influence to make it like that and i think that influence is god well why do you think that well because it's just so I mean, where did God... I mean, what, what makes you think that God was the one who invented the reproductive system? Well, because who else did, then? It just happened like that. Na- what about like nature? That. Well, how did nature create it, then? Is nature God, then, or...? Well, have you not witnessed nature, how grass grows in one season and it doesn't in another? Well, how I corn and apples form on trees? Uh, have, have you not witnessed that birds and bees uh, carry around pollen on their wings and their feet? And, and, and therefore bring forth the fruit and the yeah, flowers. Yeah, when, when it and does do that, when it does bring forth the fruit, how, like, the scientific process that makes it do that, how does that happen? Who designed that process? I think God designed that process. Oh, right. So the, there couldn't be any other reason. There has to be something... Well, what other reasons are there? Well, nature, I keep trying to tell you. Well, may, maybe God is nature. Oh, that's, that's a very big question. Yes, thank you very much, Oliver. <clears throat> uh, 0874 is our number. Let's go to Roger in Glasgow, see if we can pick up the pace of it. Roger, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. You've got the press, mate. Surely there must be a God in the heaven. Why must there oh, be? I don't know if I'm a bit depressed, but don't tell me I put up with this past 50 years for nothing. Well, if, if, <laughs> if, if, it's, if it's so good, Roger, the, the next place you're going to... Well, why are you hanging around? <laughs> I can make a joke about that, Mike. So they told me that suicide was a sin. I would go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> you mentioned, right, <laughs> for people that's into God, why, if there's a God, do these terrible things happen on earth to mankind? No uh, tsunamis and God knows what. Right, for us a God. But it's explained in the Bible. When I was taught as a kid, I think most of the Christian world were about Adam and Eve and stuff. And, no, he eaten the apple and then we get evicted. No, God threw us out of Eden, didn't he? Yeah, so the people that were, just to take the tsunami, and it was uh, but a small example, uh, just to take the tsunami as an example, so the thousands of people who died in terrible circumstances, the families who were ripped apart, the children who were left homeless, the children who died, they'd all eaten the apple, had they? They'd all offended (sighs) God, so he thought, right, I'll drown the lot of you. No, oh, please, give me a break. <laughs> this is Talk Sport. The Battle of Little Big Hawk, 2041. That's the, uh, the year of my final payment for my uh, plastic surgery. The battle with your credit history can be a right moga, but not any longer with the Top Sport prepaid debit card. So it doesn't matter if you've been knocked back, blacklisted, or laughed at by the man in the post office. The Top Sport prepaid debit card is your knight in shining plastic. The Top Sport prepaid debit card will give one to absolutely anyone. Click TopSport.net now. I've always believed in the magic Stay with me Of a little bit of ice Stay with me Magnus Irish Cider Time dedicated to you The changeover date for the construction industry scheme is nearly here From April, contractors will need to complete monthly returns to HM Revenue and Customs Detailing all payments to subcontractors Returns will need to be made by the 19th of each month which means there's no longer any need to worry about individual vouchers. Ah. To make sure you know what to do, visit new-cis.com or call 0845-366-7899. And make sure you can relax this April. Oi, van drivers, is your van insurance in need of a damn good seeing to? Then give Budget Van Insurance a bell. They'll grab hold of your premium and squeeze it till it begs for mercy. Result, you get the cheapest quote from over 13 top insurers. And get this, you could save up to 177 quid. To call in the heavy mob, get on the blower to Budget Van Insurance on 0800 247 247 or go to budgetvaninsurance.com. Budget Van Insurance, it's a van man thing. Saving up to 177 pound is based on a survey conducted in May 2006. Freedom Wolves! Why is everyone dumping their radiators? They've all got Polyplum Overlay! Polyplum Overlay from Polypipe is a floor heating system that goes over your existing floor, connects to your heating system, providing more wall space in kitchens, bathrooms, loft conversions, extensions, and conservatories. Polyplum Overlay, a complete floor heating system from Polypipe. Find a local installer at freeyourwalls.com or call 08450 944 944 for details. All inquiries go into a free prize draw for a flat screen TV. Conditions apply. 
1089 and 1053 AM. Look! And on Freeview Channel 723. Meet the new star of the Christmas show. Talk Sport. Good evening, I'm Mike Dickin. This is Talk Sport. Well, you know what we're talking about. I was just thinking about other factors that come to mind when we talk about a belief in God. There are no advantages to not believing in God. Being an atheist doesn't bring you any credit at all. In fact, quite the reverse. So there are no reasons to say, I don't believe, other than that you don't believe. But I don't care if anybody else believes. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not on a crusade. Except I worry that people may be spoiling their lives or allowing their lives to be spoiled by this continual claim to believe in God. And I don't honestly truly believe that many or all who say they do actually do believe in God they just don't say they don't if you go into court as a non-believer and you're asked to swear to God on the Bible and all the rest of it and you say no I, I don't do that uh, everybody automatically assumes you're a liar anything you say of that is ignored um, if you say at any point I don't believe in God in an interview for a job or something if it comes up I don't know if they're still allowed to ask that but there was a point where there were certain occupations that you were absolutely barred from unless you professed a belief in God and one or two of those were political appointments obviously you would never be a vicar although there have been a few vicars who've said well actually I, I just thought it was quite a nice job I didn't really consider whether I believed in God or not at the time one of those rose to be a bishop of course quite famously 08704 202020 is our telephone number. Just thought I'd try and clean that up a bit. Uh, James is in Manchester. James, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Hi, Mike. Um, the, just uh, my main point, uh, I come to a minute, just while I was listening, I heard somebody say about why is there suffering if there's a God that loves us. Mm. Um, I mean, I think one of the early callers sort of mentioned that, that we can't see it from... I mean, I'm an agnostic, so I'm just kind of plain devil's advocate mm. in a way that... When you say you're agnostic, can we just be clear what we mean by that? It means I have a, a, an open mind on it. Means it means you're, you're not sure. I'm you're, not sure. You're keeping your options open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, I think um, playing devil's advocate on that one, the suffering thing, that, that you know, there's, there's, our existence is a longer journey than we might imagine, and, and the suffering bit is is like... You know, the, the, the woman mentioned about inoculations on a child or perhaps the kind of um, suffering that we go through um, that, that, that might be part of a larger spiritual journey, like... So sometimes making people suffer from violent illness, sick, sickness, disease, uh, and, and, and ultimate death at a very early age is good for us, is it? Uh, no, 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 I, I, can't, I can't say that. That, that, that bit of it is, is, makes sense to me at all. But the, the, there is there is suffering in all lives, and perhaps through some kinds of suffering we can grow wiser, can't we? Um, that doesn't, which doesn't kill you makes you stronger, is a theory. Like that. But I can't answer the big things like tsunami, that doesn't make any sense to me, but um, maybe, maybe, maybe that's because, you know, we, 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 we're very limited in our knowledge, but um, just to come to my main point, Mike, um, somebody asked Mr. Dork, uh, Professor Dawkins earlier on about, where, you know, something coming from nothing, and that's always been my thing about, again, playing devil's advocate, if people who don't believe that there is a creator God, the source, where, does this, where did the source material for everything we see around <laughs> the, us come the from? Very, the very question, uh, the, it, 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 it answers itself, doesn't it? If there was nothing, there wasn't a God. Sorry, say that again? So there had to be something for there to be a God, didn't there? Um, so if there was a God, why weren't there other things? How, how can... Well, was God the only thing? Is that what you're saying? I, I oh, don't... Well, that's a bit arrogant, isn't it? I, I don't know... As an agnostic, I don't know what God, in quotes, is. It's something that... What do you, what do you, when you think of God, and this... this I, I think this is a fundamental question, yeah. although I haven't yeah. had an answer yet. Yeah. When you think of God, what do you think of? Well, I don't know, because I'm not... I'm an agnostic. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying is... But you must get a picture in your head, surely. No, I don't. I, I, I get, uh, all right, there's some kind of force that there's bigger than us. Like, like the chap earlier on who talked about the, like, say, the comparison between the, the insect and the human being. Something that's 
far greater in understanding than us and power than us. Um, and this power is what circling the world. I don't so know. It, 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 no, I'm, because I'm not, God I'm not, doesn't only look after us; He I'm looks not, after all the animals. <laughs> He I'm grows the grass. I'm not a he makes the rivers Mike. flow. But you, you're evading the question, Mike. Because no, I'm not. You are. Where did, where did the source material come from? If it wasn't created, where did it come from? Are you talking about the world, the earth, this yes, planet? Everything, everything we see around us. Everything and everything and everything. So I mean, a there, scientist says a scientist will say for any effect there has to be a cause. So if I'm looking at like I'm now looking at a, a carrier bag. From a from from a supermarket in my room here, which yeah. I did some shopping from earlier. Yes, yes. Now, some, a scientist will say that cannot have appeared from nothing. No, some, nothing some, can appear in that made way. It. Of so, course, somebody, but it, so who made the original source material? But who made God? Well, I don't. No, no, no. But no, there no. you are. I mean, it's no, the same you, stupid. Cra- I'm not going to pursue this with you. It's a pointless circular argument, which is absolutely stupid. I'm not. No, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> d- I'm not coming down to that level. It, it is. It is so stupid. I can't begin to believe you're proposing it. However, you did, and it's over. And I feel better now. We're going to Romania. Jim. Good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Good evening again, Mike. Yes, sir. I've got the answer to your last question. Oh, right. But who created God? Right. Right, because I was brought up as a Catholic, and I was brought up to believe that man was created in God's image. I now don't believe that. I believe that God was created by man in his image. Absolutely spot on. And this is what we're living with. And basically, the prophets were the politicians of the day. The Bible and the Quran is basically a control document. Mm. Control the masses. Well, religion is a form of control. Yeah. I think anybody would argue that. Yeah, and we've now got Blair and Bush as the new prophets. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. So that's about it, Mike. But I think the, the point you make, it, I mean, it sounds as though it's just a smart remark, but it actually is the truth. It's, it's absolutely true. Man created God. Yes. Because you're, you're very point there, and I, I just, I was about to say that, when you keep me hearing about, oh, where did the source material come from? Oh, it's God. And you're absolutely right. Where did God come from? Mm. Um, Jim, thank you. I won't keep on, but uh, it, it's it, it is a point that uh, I forget who it was now. It's it's a writer. His name will come to me shortly. Not that, that matters, but he did say uh, if God didn't exist, we'd have to invent them, have to invent one. And at a later date, somebody said, "Well, he doesn't exist, so we've invented lots of them." And we have. I mean, we've got the God of Christianity, the God of Islam, Buddhism, Sikhism, Hinduism, Scientology, the lot that knock the door, the names always elude me, are they? Ones that always have the eyes like sharks, you know, completely dead, they just stare straight ahead of themselves. If you invited them for a cup of tea, they'd run a mile. But you wouldn't anyway. 0874 20, 20, 20 is the number. Adam is... Well, I'm not sure where you are, Adam. Where are you? Hello. Um, in Tyneside, Adam? Tyneside, all right. Good morning. Hello, Good evening. Right. Hi. Nice to meet you. Um, right, I, I was just calling out. If, if, I, can, I can speak about many of the points you just said, but I'm, I want to get things in quickly because I know you've probably got lots of other callers. We are um, overwhelmed. Right, well, OK. Um, I just like um, a few a few types of evidence um, of God's existence through the fact that, um, that the Bible, well... I'm Jewish, basically. So the Torah could not have been written um, by a human being because there's no, it's not humanly possible for a human being to make such such predictions and such um, statements. I'll right. give you a few examples. It says um, in the Bible that that um, for a fish to be kosher, it has to have two qualities. It has to have fins and scales, right? And we have in our tradition that if it's got um, scales. It definitely has fins, so we have to look for the scales. But in our tradition, it says any fish which only ha- um, there is not a single fish in the universe which has scales and no fins. Right now, how is it possible? For I'm it sorry, well, this is for fas- to- fascinating, but it doesn't mean a thing to me. Well, uh, let me explain to you. Uh, if 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 it was a person, there's only two options: who could have written the Bible, right? It could have been a God, or it could have been people. I mean, yeah. right, like discounting aliens, you know, things like that. <laughs> Why discount aliens? Well, if you believe okay. in God, you surely believe in aliens. All right, 
I think we've got a bit more evidence of a god than aliens. Oh, I, I would I would say quite the reverse, but still. All right, okay. Well, okay, it, aliens is a new thing. Okay, but let's all right. Let's stick to, to the god and the, all right. Let's we'll bring aliens in later if you want. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Both, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Right, either there's going to be um, god or humans. A human cannot predict it, all the species which were only discovered through deep sea diving stuff like that at the bottom of the ocean. There's no way any humans could have gone there, especially like if it's written. So on the one Bible, be, the Bible predicted the existence of creatures that we've only just discovered. Right, well, yes, well, that's but, what you're saying, is it? Basically, it's telling us qualities. Of no, no, I'm asking you a simple question: Does the Bible predict the existence of creatures which have yet to be discovered? Yes, basically. Thank you. Oh. Right, right um, can I give a couple more? Well, okay. yes, yes, I mean, it's yeah, yeah, sorry, okay. Right, there's also, um, there's four no, um, animals. Right, for, to, for an animal to be kosher, it has to have split hooves and chew the cut. And we have a tradition that there's only four animals in the universe, right, well, the world, which only have one of the two signs. So that's a, a pig has split hooves and doesn't chew the cut, right? Right, and that's the only one which has split hooves which doesn't chew, that doesn't chew the cud. Any animal besides a pig which has split hooves will, will definitely chew the cud. Right? And there's no way a human could have known about that because you've got all different Australia and America, all the different animals there. Yeah. Which, it, it, and anyway, it would be stupid for why do they put it in the Bible in the first place? Why make a stupid prediction like that? Can, can, can I just show you how serious it is? No, it, it does. It, I mean, that's got me. I'm, I'm, I shan't sleep. Thank you very much. Um... Well, bless my soul. Well, that's blown my arguments right out of that. I, I now must believe in God, because it's been proven to me that pigs have split hooves and don't chew the cud. I knew that. This is Talk Sport. Talk Sport, the radio station which is so fed up with the holiday festive hype, it's going away this year. On Two Weeks in the Maldives on Alan Brazil's private yacht. How you doing? DAB Digital Radio. Or alternatively, Boxing Day in Beaky's static caravan in Silla. With your sister-in-law and her bearded four-eyed Cumbrian prat of a husband. Yes, you know who you are, Kelly. 1089 and 1053 medium wave. This is Talk Sport. There's Talk Sport. Good evening. We're going to Enfield. John's there. John, uh, you're on Talk Sport. Primitive. Myself. Sorry, can you start again, John? We missed the beginning yes, of that. I'm a primitive. I'm very primitive. Right. Okay, I believe in that I'm a sun worshipper. I think that's quite sensible. Okay. Mm. Uh, now, the thing is, when somebody mentions God to me, I always, the first word I think of is opium. And Karl Marx summed it up. He said that it's opium from for the people. Opium for the people, And it people, started yeah. with Constantine, you know, the Emperor Constantine. But not personally, he, no. Well, you know, he was a Roman emperor. He kind of switched, you know, and used uh, religion to, shall we say, manipulate the people. Mm. And it's still happening today. Though it happens all over the world, and I can give you examples of it which are, I think, quite horrifying. Uh, exactly. Well, you know, the, the, we shouldn't have uh, uh, religion in, in, in our government. I 100 percent any government. I 100% agree. It, it is, to me, you can't be the Prime Minister of this country unless you profess an absolute belief in God. Uh, and there have been one or two who suddenly, although most of their lives they've been atheists or at the best agnostic, suddenly got got religion the nearer they got to the front bench. I'm not going to name any names, there's one very famous one, um, who suddenly thought, hey, I'm going to be Prime Minister, and suddenly started professing a belief in God, having been a professed atheist all his life until that moment. And I thought, well, there, whoa, what a change on the road to Damascus that was. Oh, have I just given a biblical quote? Oh, dear. Thank you very much for the call, John. Uh, Tom is in Cambridge. Tom, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Hi, Mike. Hi. Yeah, um, I, I was, um, I, I just wanted to, the point I wanted to make was that um, Richard Dawkins wrote a chapter in his book, wh which was, Why There Is Almost Certainly No God. Mm. And, well, well, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with that, but I, I mean, there's another question we could ask. Is there a God that makes any difference to the way we should lead our lives? Now, that question, we, we can say emphatically no. And, and what's embarrassing is we've known this for blooming ages. I think it was about 400 B.C. that Plato first posed the question, is something good because God says it is, or is it 
or is it, um, if God says it's good, is it good? In other mm. words, he, he showed very simply that concepts of goodness and love, and so you callers have been saying God is love, God is good, these concepts are external to God, and God actually has to be judged by those um, measures as, as, as sure as we do. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm taking your point to stage further. I've heard one of the... Um, backwards collar wearers, what are they called, with the long frock and the big tall hat, what are they called, bishops or archbishops? Yeah, or common charlatans, I think. Nah, that's the word. Yeah. I've heard one of those spouting off this week about the lack of morals in an increasingly secular society, yeah. as, though, as though Christianity has anything to do with morality. It's, um, it has no relationship whatsoever. No, uh, uh, not, and yes, it, it, the, the history of Christianity has been so blood-soaked, it is rather astonishing that, that you, you hear that. Uh, that canard, really. But, uh, no, I mean, the, 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 the problems, man, I mean, you, we, we've heard the, the problems, the problem of evil, problem of infinite regression. No, the, the so-called theologians have had endless incoherent stabs at these um, problems, and they, they've never been solved to anybody's satisfaction. But, of course, nobody quite could still work out where life from. And then Darwin just sort of blew the whole thing out of the water. He explained it, and mm. really, religion should have died a death then. And the well, very largely it did. I mean, it's reinvented itself uh, in many ways as being a branch of the social services. Yeah. Uh, it's reinvented itself as being uh, a moral police force. Uh, it's reinvented itself as being something that children will be very warmly welcomed into. Um, I wouldn't leave my children with too many of them, it has to be said. The evidence is fairly clear. Um, there are other factors that... With, I, I don't want to damn people who believe in religion, but I doubt their sincerity, I, and, I, and, I, and I sometimes doubt their integrity. Yes, but honesty is, is a major problem. And um, the, the, the thing about... Um, religion that I mean it's, it's very and, and of course this is Richard Dawkins um, really key contribution here is, is the concept of the meme a lot of you callers have been talking about religion as a sort of form of control mm. and of course they're right it, it is but what, what Richard has shown is something far more subtle the way that ideas concepts like heaven and hell they can take on a life of their own and they can actually evolve. And you were talking about the way religions have adapted. They're actually uh, evolving along evolutionary lines. And, and I think, you know, religions would rather sort of now talk about control and the Inquisition rather than let us see what Richard Dawkins has been showing us, how banal it, what, what is really going on is. What, what is actually going on is ideas like heaven and hell, they exist because they can. Because if you tell a child you've got to believe this or you get a help... Well, I was saying about children earlier, and if you, you know, you tell a child that Father Christmas will bring you presents if you behave yeah. in the way that you're told to, you, you, chances are you're going to behave the way you're told to. If you tell the same child that you will have a, a wonderful, warm, comfortable life if you behave, behave the way God tells you to, uh, you'll say, sign me up, I'll be a Christian. Yeah. Uh, but right. when you get a bit older, you don't believe in Father Christmas for very good reason, and neither do many go on believing in God. No, but we, we, we carry on because we've been burdened by the, by the past. But now we know the cat's out of the bag. Religion is incoherent, it's immoral, it's, it's just vacuous, it's banal, and really, I think it's time. We've really got to go on the attack. I think with, with Richard's book, and there's a lot of other people, there's a, there's a great guy in the States called Sam Harris who's, who's really hitting hard on this. Mm. I, I think we can, we can really break religion. Well, I, I, I don't... I mean, I'm not going to go on a campaign, and I, I don't necessarily think it would be a wise thing because something else would replace it, which could be even worse. And in some parts of the United States, it already has. Uh, but while people are comfortable with their belief, um, then fine, as long as it doesn't well, interfere no. with the way they change and they respond to other people. But those who are uncomfortable with their belief and only believe in God because they daren't not believe should really re-examine their thoughts. Thank you very much for the call. If that is the case, I'm, I, I know somebody, um, or at least I know of somebody, who is so scared to say I don't believe in God in case he's struck down the next moment that he says it on a, he says things on a very uh, frequent, on frequent occasions uh, about how his beliefs have carried him through all manner of ailments and illnesses. Uh, but he doesn't believe a word of it. But he didn't say so. Uh, Danny is in Stanmore. Danny, good, more, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Well, good evening, Mike. There is a statement in the Bible, a statement, not a belief or anything like that, an actual statement oh. that says that three million people, uh, I, I say three million six hundred thousand families, 
before Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, heard the voice of God around Mount Sinai. This has never been disproved. The, the children didn't say that was rubbish. Future generations didn't say it was rubbish. That was a, a claim made which has never been disproved. Uh, does it need to be? But three million people can't have hallucinations. Well, how many, how many of those three million people said, I heard the voice of God? Oh, quite a few, because later on, you know? later on the narrative, you get the... Hey, uh, whoa, whoa. How, how many of those people actually yeah. said, I heard the voice of God? How many? Yeah. Well... The answer is none. Well, it's not true, because if you... No, refer... there, there's not one report, there's not there one... There is, there is. Well, if you go a bit further in the No, story... you know, let's stay where we are, because... No, no, first of all, did, did, important... those, did those people actually exist anyway? No, because there's a fellow... Is that called... a story? Yes, or did somebody a... make it up? But, Mike, there's a fellow called Korah who said to Moses, why are you leading the people, I'm as holy as you are? That was story wouldn't make sense, because he said, I heard the voice of God like you heard the voice of God. What makes you a leader, not, not me a leader? Yeah, but it's, it's a good story. No, no, but if it was just a story, surely the children would say to their fathers, why did you write such rubbish? We didn't hear anything. But none of them did. Well, because the book was written 700 years afterwards, they'd have been dead for a while. Yes, but, what I, but Mike, if you're going to write a story and say there's witnesses to a fact, you're opening up quite a um, quagmire because anybody can challenge you on that. I mean, does has yeah. anybody actually heard, you know, you know the talking horse? You know, yeah. Does anybody write and dispute that it talks? I don't think so. Oh, you're talking nonsense. I can't, I can't entertain that sort of rubbish. There are people with intelligent arguments to put forward and, and remarks to make and, and questions which really do deserve someone to think about and answer. But, oh, I, I can't even come down to that level. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, Kevin is in Livingstone. Kevin, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Good evening. How are you? My health's not in question for the last time. <laughs> right. Well, basically what I'm phoning for is I'm just um, in reply to um, the Mr Dawkins that you had on earlier on, who um, seemed to make quite a lot of um, talk about evolution. Yes, and that's, he also that's he what also, he does. He also said that he had a lot of facts regarding it. Yeah, well, he is, he is actually uh, a leading evolutionary biologist and a professor of zoology at Oxford University, so he does have those. Sure, yeah, well, what, what I was just following up for was um, there's actually a website on the internet. Um, it's www.drdino.com, which is D-I-N-O. Um, basically, he is um, contractually bound now to... Um, he's offering $250,000 U.S., um, for any shred of evidence regarding evolution. It's quite an interesting website he's got. He, he, he is a Christian scientist. Any shred of evidence regarding evolution? Sorry? A shred of evidence, yeah. And, I mean, he's had that offer now for ten years, and so uh, far... So this man is offering money in return for any shred of evidence of evolution? Yes. Um, I mean... I, I, like I'm sorry, I, I just don't believe you. Right, well, I mean, you can certainly check the website out for yourself, Mike. Um, I mean... There is no scientific evidence whatsoever for it, not a shred of proof. Okay. The man is a Christian scientist himself. Um, he, he What's a Christian scientist? Well, I mean, when, when we talk about science, we have to look at either what's known as true science, which is provable fact, and evolution, which is obviously, I mean, it's not provable because it's not repeatable. Science can only uh, I'm sorry, but you went... Repeatable. went went. I, I'm, I'm just going to ask you this, and then we'll move on, but sure. when you look around yourself, Kevin, tomorrow, and you look at the the flowers, the trees, the birds and the bees, and the, the men and the women and the animals and the, the creatures that you see, uh -huh. you don't see any evidence of evolution. No, I don't see any evo evidence of evolution. Okay, like, no, 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 sorry, no, sorry, I, I, I really, I, I don't think it would be wise to continue the conversation. For your sake. Uh, Chris is in Brighton. Chris, good evening. You're on Talk Sport. Hi, Mike. Uh, what would I like to say? Um, well, I think God is kind of obvious. You don't really need a Bible or anything. You can just sort of see it with your own eyes. Um, I just sat in a park the other day and just looked at some people walking in different directions, dogs, some trees with no leaves, and then some bushes underneath that had leaves. And then I sort of thought, what's coordinating the whole thing? Yeah. So you, uh, didn't, you didn't think of nature, per chance, did you? Well, nature, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if Richard Dawkins is really going against God as such. It's possible that evolution is just the mechanical, the visible aspects of of what's going on, but, but really God is behind that. I mean, I would recommend anyone to have a look at Kabbalah, really. 
if they don't not interest in God, but they want to want to study. What what's Kabbalah? Um, but it's like a sort of um, Jewish religion. Um, but I thought Christianity was a Jewish religion. Well, kind of, but Christianity's been messed around with a lot. Or a Jewish myth, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah Chris- Christianity's got some truth in it, but it's not the whole story. I yeah. wonder. I wonder why it is that uh, this all happened um, elsewhere in the world, and yet Britain seems to be the centre of it. Oh, it odd, isn't it? The centre of. Well, this uh, the argument. I mean, the Church of England, obviously, being in this country, wh- I wonder why the Church of England adopted Christianity. Um, that's a difficult question. It is, isn't it? Christianity sort of forced its way in from their yeah. accounts. I mean, they sort of like there was there was a guy called Esus, and that was actually the original Jesus. They mm. say, um, you know. Christmas is like a oh, I believe. Oh, I believe that Jesus was a bloke. Oh, I do. And I believe. I, I'm no doubt that Jesus Christ existed. I don't think he was anything to do with God. I think he was. Um, early was a sort of early day Paul Daniels who went round doing magic tricks and impressing people yeah, uh, with, with his skill doing that sort of thing. And in consequence, they believed everything he said. It, mm, he was a powerful man. He, I think he was. Yeah. He but wasn't the son. I mean, he wasn't the son of God, for goodness sake. Uh, but he was. He was around doing tricks, and then he went off to be a fisherman. Um, did what other people did at the same time. Um, but, yeah, I have no doubt that Jesus existed. But he certainly wasn't born in December. Oh eight seven oh four twenty 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 is our number. There's lots to talk about. This is Talk Sport. Hey, 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 it's payday! Every Friday afternoon from four on the game, when we play that's outrageous on Talk Sport with Norwich Union Direct Van Insurance. Total up the latest transfer fee figures of three top Premiership players, and if your pay packet prediction is bang on the money, you could win a thousand pounds. That's a grand in your hand to spend on Skittles and beer, and the wife never needs to know. Play that's outrageous! Every Friday afternoon on the game on Talk Sport with Norwich Union Direct Van Insurance, the choice of the professional. He's past his peak. He's the star of the team. His transfer fee could buy me two new players. He's clinched their place in the final. The midfield got us through the early rounds. Stop thinking like a fan. Start thinking like a manager. Football Manager 2007, out now on PC and Mac. Free the world. Why is everyone dumping their radiators? They've all got polyplum overlay. Polyplum overlay from Polypipe is a floor heating system that goes over your existing floor, connects to your heating system, providing more wall space in kitchens, bathrooms, loft conversions, extensions, and conservatories. Polyplum overlay, a complete floor heating system from Polypipe. Find a local installer at freeyourwalls.com or call 08450 944 944 for details. All inquiries go into a free prize draw for a flat screen TV. Conditions apply. There's a barman in my fridge. At least I think there is. The footprints in the butter are a clue. He's the one who gives my Guinness that smooth and creamy finish. And I bet he'd come and do the same for you. I've never caught him working, but that doesn't mean he's shirking. It just means he hears me coming to the door. Yes, the proof of his existence I can find without assistance in every can of Guinness draft I pour. Cheers. Guinness Draft at home. Good things come to those who... Pick some up at Morrison's. Good evening, I'm Mike Again, This is Talk Sport. We continue talking about the existence of God and the effect that religion has on people, I think, is probably another factor. Is it a system of control? Is it a necessary crutch for some people? Is a belief in religion and God a side of psychiatric problems? You know you can tell me in total confidence, right here on Talk Sport. On 1089 and 1053 AM, Mike Dickin on Talk Sport. Good morning, I'm Mike Dickin. This is Talk Sport. You know what we're talking about. And there are other things we can talk about as well. Don't feel that it's exclusively about uh, the existence or otherwise of God or whether it's to do with the control of religion or the influence of religion and other factors related to religious belief. The phone lines are very, very busy and continue to be so. But if you can get through and there's another topic that you think is of equal importance, we'll give it a go. Um, 08704-202020 is that number. Uh, Iqbal is in Birmingham. Iqbal, good morning. You're on TalkSport. 
Yeah, hi, Mike. I just wanted to share my belief about existence of God. Uh, I'm of the Islamic faith. Right. And I believe there is God. Right. And not to believe that there isn't, a go- isn't God is to be a bit, I'd say, not don't want to be rude, but a bit ignorant. Because, okay. Um, looking around us, the trees, the rain, the sky, the moon, the stars, uh, if we read the religious books, it all makes sense with the messengers coming to people generations before. Does it? Um, from the first person, Adam, who God created and then sent messengers from Adam to Muhammad, including Jesus, Moses. They all came with the same message, and it was a reminder to people that, you know, at the end of the day, it says that every soul is going to face death. And, you know, that is a reality we just can't deny. And, and personally, I mean, everybody's entitled to their own beliefs and whatever they want to believe sure. and whatever satisfies them themselves or whatever they feel comfortable with. But the reality is everything will come to an end and we will all be questioned in front of our creator, your creator, my creator, the creator of the world uh, who says that he... He's, uh, well, he's going to sort of sit there and pass judgment, was he? Well, let's put it this way. Everybody is going to be accountable for their own deeds. But yeah, but who's, who's going to decide what, whether I did bad or not? Yeah, well, in the Quran it says... No, I mean, who's going to make that decision? Sorry, who is it? Well, let me just explain. The Islamic belief, belief is when you die, the, the, all human beings have angels, two angels with them, one on the right, one on the left. Oh, right. I've never, they, seen, I've never seen them. No, they, they're not. They're not something we we can see. And something else uh, we can't see. Oh, that's no, convenient. No, angels are a bit more sort of. Where do they come serious. from then? Well, let's put it this way. You see, our understanding, uh, our comprehension, it doesn't extend to the limit that we could understand the power of God. God is is just superior of all things, and is merciful. And well, I, I've, I've proved that he's not very merciful, but there, go on. But let's put it this way. God says he's given us five senses. We can see our, the way our did, body did God, works. Did God say that? Sorry? Did God say we've got five senses, or was it a scientist? Well, earlier on, uh, the, uh, one of the uh, callers mentioned a quotation from the Quran to say about the embryology, about how human beings, are actually formed, and it also says on a certain number of days the angel comes and decides whether it will be a boy or a girl. So everything is all. Oh right! Down so an angel. Dec- why? Why would an angel decide on whether it's a boy or a girl? Well, God decides, but the angel comes. It's going to be very and busy. Decides, yeah. But the main thing is, we need to think. No, but the main thing is, how does he make that decision with all the millions of babies that are being born? Does he? Everybody, whoever, everybody's going to be coming to the earth, and then at the end, it, there will be day of judgment. And well, I know, I'm just, no, no, no you, you, you keep on and on, but you don't listen to anything that's said in response, do you? It, there are millions of babies being born. Sure. Um, just on, in, on a practical level, how does one God deal with all of those, then? Well, that's how the does he make those decisions? You see, we can't limit our understanding about God. All right. That, so that is, yes. hmm. God is more powerful or superior than we, our, our brain can limit. Uh, God says, if you were to write all the blessings of God and favors upon us, uh, the whole ocean, if, even if you, that was full of ink and you wrote all the good things about God, it, it would still not suffice. His and God said that, did he? So he's a bit boastful then. No, God is explaining to human beings that you could do what you want on this earth, but there is a time you will be accountable and come back, mm. and I will question you of what you did, uh, denying all his favours. But, if, I mean, the fact that I don't believe in him, does that mean I won't get to meet him? No, I think you have to admit that you were created, and there is a... Uh, well, I was God created by my God, parents, actually. And they were created by their parents. Their parents, and, and so on, back, yeah. Adam was the first human being... Uh, we could, was he? You know, right. we could be quizzed over it, but that is... All right, that but, is but when I get answer. there, when I get to this place, wherever it is, yeah. and he says, right, you, you've spent your life saying I don't exist. Um, I'm, what's he going to do with me? Right, well, God will question.
question. You uh, you were given eyes. You were given a brain. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, we know all the bits that I've got. Um, you may yeah. you may be surprised at some of the things I've got, but I have a few. <laughs> but when I get there, and he's done all the bit that goodness me, he's going to be so busy. He's going to go through it all. But then he will decide on what the fact that I didn't believe in him is bad. Then so I'm a bad person. Off I go to Hades or somewhere. Well, yeah, or no, I'm not, so I'm just asking you. Yeah, well, the thing is... If no, no, if I'm asking you a question. What does he do with someone like me? Well, deliberately being ignorant, knowing that there is... No, I'm not deliberately being is... ignorant. No, I, I spent the first eight, nine, ten years, maybe, of my life yeah. believing in God. Right. It's only when I grew up I realised what a load of old tosh it was. But when you're in deep... Tr- uh, in a problem, who do you call out to? I certainly don't call out to God. Um, well, I think there's millions and billions of people around the world who do. But oh, I'm the sure the day, there are, and there are millions of people who claim to believe in God because they're scared to say anything else. But uh, thinking sensibly, I mean, who else, what else is there after life? If God is saying in the religious scriptures, you were dead, then you were given life, then you will be given death. When you're in the ground, then you'll be given life again, and you'll be asked about what you used to do in life. You really believe that you get another there life, do you? Well, there is a purpose of life, and, and you see... Well, it's to enjoy yourself. No, no, that is completely wrong. Is I it? Mean, we, uh, humans are uh, such a the technical form, and, uh, you know, if we uh, speak to a doctor and he will be able to explain uh, the eyesight we have, the brains we have, and it, it doesn't make sense that everything has just come into existence without any purpose. No, no, but that, 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 um, it does, because you couldn't exist without them. And therefore there would be no human beings. Uh, human beings are living longer um, in general. Um, therefore, I, I suppose, we're enjoying ourselves a bit more. Um, but I don't, what is the purpose of life, then? It's to probably to help evolution, um, to help the world move on, um, to leave it a better place than it was when you came here, would be a nice thought. Uh, and to have a damn good time while you're here, because you ain't going to get another go. You only get one go at this, you know. But I'm clear you don't believe that. Um, I just still would like to love to know. Not that it bothers me, but uh, it would be interesting to know what the answer is to when I get there. And he says, ooh, you've been a bad lad. You told everybody I didn't exist. I'm going to deal with you very sternly. I say, hang on a minute. I may have got that bit wrong, but I was a really nice person. I helped lots of people, and I was a wonderful father and husband, and I did lots of good things. You must have them down in your book there. You say, ah, yes, but that doesn't count. I'm not taking any notice of any of the things you did, just that you denied my existence. Now go to hell. 08704 2020 20, 20. Is that a telephone number? Sandra is in Manchester. Sandra, good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Um, good morning. I'm surprised at you, actually. Are you? Talk- talking like that. Why? Um, I believe in God. I oh, believe right. that Jesus is the Son of God. And mm. I think. He was illegitimate, though, wasn't he? Sorry? He was an illegitimate son. Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, he, he, did God sleep with, with uh, Jesus' mother then? No. No, well, um, a bit odd then. Well, anyway, I do do believe in that, and I think it's a good thing, and I think if everybody believed in it, the world would be definitely a better place. Do you? Why? And I normally agree with everything you say, except really? for this one. Well, wh- why do you believe the world would be a better place, Sandra? Why? Yeah. If people follow the rules of religion, it what definitely rules? would be a better Which place. Which religion? Sorry? Which religion? Christianity. Oh, so everybody should be Christian. Yeah, not religious. Not? I mean, people believe <laughs> in God. Uh, which one? Uh, there are about, uh, about two dozen at the last count. Um, which one do we believe, and which set of rules do we follow? Um, if you believe the Ten Commandments, if you follow... Are those... the Ten Commandments in Buddhism, then? Um, I don't think so. No, so what do they do, then? To be honest, I don't know what no, they do. No, so you don't really care, do you? Um... Well, I'm a Christian, and I just believe in that. Right, so as long as everybody was Christian, is what you meant, uh, that would be good, but not well, if everybody believes in religion. Well, even if they believed in God, even if you don't 
follow if if you follow those rules, I don't I don't think you can go wrong. No, so I, I'll tell you what the Christians did at one point. You will remember this, I'm sure, from your history lessons. They went across parts of the world where they believed in other things, and they said, "Are you a Christian, old chap?" And they said, "No, we're whatever they were." So the Christians chopped their heads off. I think that was called the Crusades. Um, but that's not... Religion doesn't teach to do those things. But that's what they were doing. They were trying to make everybody Christian. And when, and when that didn't work, they sent out missionaries. Missionaries, some of the most evil people that ever walked the face of the planet. They went to countries that were perfectly happy as they were, had their own systems, had their own ways of life, had their own ways of doing things, which were perfectly successful in their part of the world, because that's why they were developed in that part of the world. And along came all these missionaries and said, no, 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 don't do it like this. You want to do it like that. And by the way, while I'm here, have a read about this bloke. He's called God. And, and then do what he says. And all these people got utterly confused, and they believed it for a while. And then they thought, poor little old Tosh. But by the time they went back to the way they used to do things, it was too late. Their society had been ripped apart by confusion. Come off it, Sandra, you don't believe a word of what you're saying. Uh, Tony is in Enfield. Tony, good morning, you're on Talk Sport. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Um, great programme, great programme. Um, Christian, I've never met one. I've met thousands of people in my lifetime. I'm Christian, I'm Church of England, I'm Anglican, I'm this, that and the other. I can put my hand on my heart and say I can, I've never met a Christian in my life. But let's be reminded, 12 million children a year under the age of 5 years old starve to death across this planet. Yeah. 33,000 a day. All religion is man-made. Uh, you know, uh, religion didn't make man, but man made religion. Sigh of the oppressed, opium the people. And we use God as a defense mechanism when we go to war, whether it's our war, British war, American war. God bless America. God bless America. Take that one on board. And what, what were the, Hitler's God, last words? Were God help me? Well, I mean, it, you know, it defi you had one chap on earlier, and I don't want to be disrespectful to your callers, but, you know, if I was a psychiatrist, I'd sign the certificate. I don't think I'd let him out. I mean, he's talking about two angels, one to the left, one... And he's just repeating what he's read. Absolutely. And who created us, Mike? Our mum and dad had sex. There's no ifs, no buts. Half the world... I don't like thinking about that, do you? Well, half the <laughs> that world... That was joking, John. Mike? Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, h half the world's an accident anyway. And tell me, why would... And I was baptised Catholic, and, and I asked questions at 10, 11... That's ago. child abuse. Sorry? Child abuse. Yeah, absolutely. Baptising a child that can't even speak. You take a child into the church and you give it to the vicar who splashes a bit of water on it and says, I name the whatever, and, and then says, and we welcome you into the whatever it is of the, of the Christian belief. You didn't have a choice. No, of course not. How, you, you're, you're dragged into a club that you didn't know anything about. Mike, it's the best bit of brainwashing that man has devised because you get it from family, friends, you get it from education, you get it from your culture. Time you're 10, 12 years old, you're gone. But let me, let me just want one question for every listener to, to uh, one of your listeners to pose on. Whether you're Muslim or Jewish or Christian, Christian or whatever, why on earth would you go into a hospital and have a heart transplant or have some life-saving operation if you believed that when they screwed that lid down in that, in that wooden overcoat and you go six right, there's another world after. If I believe there's another world after, rushing off tomorrow. Like, I'd, be, I'd be jumping over Lambeth Bridge next week. Mm. Well, I, I've said that many times to others and indeed a few times on this programme, if you truly believe you're going to a better place when you die, why, why are you wasting your time talking to me? Get on your bike and get there. And th that's right. And the other thing is this. You can't tell me this God, I don't know what he does up in heaven. He's got his feet up, he's got a glass of wine, and, and he's, he's created the AIDS virus. He's created every single thing on this planet. If you believe there's a God, he's, be, he, he's created people with left-handed, he's, he's created uh, um, gay people. And was Jesus gay? I mean, I'm not being disrespectful again, but he was always surrounded by men on their knees. I don't know what they were doing, but, you know, maybe even Jesus was gay. I don't know. Well, he was a I, prophet, wasn't he? Yeah, I, I think that Jesus was just a good con man. And I think he was very good. Um, some of the tricks he pulled were fantastic. Water into wine, feeding 5,000 people with two loaves of bread. I mean, that's got to be a bit of a go. McDonald's can't do that. <laughs> no, honestly, they can't. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for the call. Uh, Shazad is in Wembley. Shazad, good morning, you're on Talk Sport. Yes, hi, hi good morning, Mike. Um, I just want to basically talk about um, this. Uh, I just got the last part of the professor 
and he was talking about the theory of evolution. Yes. Is that correct? He was, indeed. No. He was an expert in these things. Yeah, good. Um, am I correct in saying it is actually a theory and not a fact? Because that's what's interesting to me, because a lot of time we talk, we get very deep into this scientific argument, and we actually lose the sight that what we are talking about is merely... Is actually are you theory. talking about Darwinism? Yeah. Do, do I believe in Darwinism? Yes. No, I don't actually believe right. in Darwinism. Okay, so you're a creationist, then? Well, I believe in God. Yeah, okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. I believe in God. But what I find interesting is, I've been listening to a lot of your listeners, it's been extremely interesting. I'm mm. a first-time caller, I'm slightly nervous, so I hope you forgive me I'm for that. scared to death, go on. <laughs> I'm scared of you. <laughs> um, right, what it is, science for me, science and religion don't necessarily have to be up in arms at each other. They don't have to be you know, always against each other. Cause no, no, uh, there is certainly some solid ground to stand on. Absolutely. Because mm. from, from my point of view, I mean, uh, maybe I'm an odd person, but everybody that's called in, I can see their point of view. I can understand. I can understand you saying... There's no God. Why should there be God? I can understand that guy, the professor, saying, look, I've got this scientific evidence and, you know, there can't be a God because everything must be Mother Nature. But what was interesting, uh, you had a call earlier who said, you can't create something out of nothing. And the professor said, well, read a book and read this. He didn't really want to answer that question. Well, no, because it is, it is a ludicrously circular question. Um, it, it, it doesn't demand an answer. It, it, it is almost a rhetorical question. It's, can you get something from nothing? Yeah. Well, what, I mean, you have to therefore assume, yeah. or, 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 on his, or presume on his behalf, that he knows what nothing is. Yeah. Or that yeah. anybody can tell you. How do you describe nothing? <laughs> yeah. yeah but no, I'm, I'm serious. How do you describe nothing? No, but I think the gentleman asked the question... He, he, but, uh, yes, I know the question he asked, yes, but sir. if you're going to answer a question, or even ask a question, mm -hmm. relating to nothing, yes. you first of all have to know what nothing is. That's correct. He didn't have a clue, neither do I, neither do you. Neither do I, yeah. <laughs> Thank you but, very much for the call. We but, shall move on. Uh, John is in Swansea. John, good morning, you're on Talk Sport. <laughs> good morning, Mike. Um... This God thing. Yes. Cause generating some heat, isn't it? Isn't it just? I'm, um... And so near I, Christmas as well. <laughs> I'm looking out my window, and I can see a car. The car is fit for purpose. Its wheels go round. Its engine does what its engine does. The lights come on as required. It is finely engineered. And I'd go and buy that if I were you. They don't all do that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's mine. It's my yeah. car. Oh, right. you already own it. <laughs> um, and... Can I just ask you to do something? It's, it's a, it's, stick your hand in front of your face, Mike. Go, yeah, go on. Wiggle your fingers. Yeah. Form a fist and curl your hand around and make all sorts of funny shapes. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. Your hand, Mike, yeah. is far, far more complicated than the car that's outside my house at the Absolutely, moment. Absolutely, yeah. The car... My fingernail's more complicated <laughs> than your car. Yeah. The car is testimony to German engineering. Mm -hmm. A designer, um, and, and it's, it does the job it's meant to do. Yeah. To me, your hand, as handsome as your hand is, Mike... It is a very good hand. ...speaks to me that there is a designer. There is a God. Yeah. And there is a designer, yes. Yeah, it's, called, it's, called, it's called nature. And we, we've, we've evolved our hand um, into the shape and the, what it is. And I'll tell you what, uh, the next stage of evolution, uh, it, won't, it won't be in your lifetime or mine, it takes a bit longer than that, we'll have three hands. But the interesting thing is, though, Mike, right? You don't the, even want to know if why. There was, so. If there was an explosion in a, in a, in a, um, a car factory, mm. if there were 20 explosions, if there were a million explosions going on for millions of years, mm -hmm. it would not produce a car. Nature is blind. Nature's not a person. You said we will evolve. We don't evolve in the sense that we will it. No, no, you see, we, no, no, the no, no, you're, missing, you're missing one little factor here, and it's, on, it, it's convenient for your argument, but you're leaving out intelligence, and intelligence leads us to try and do things. It leads us to have aspiration. It gives us the, the idea to move this over there and do that over there. And when we can't... We invent something to let us do it, like we can't reach the ceiling, so we invent stepladders, and so on. But, over time, if we continue to try and reach that ceiling, 
We will grow a little taller until we do. It may take millions of years, but it will happen. And one day we'll probably have a third arm as well. And that'll allow us to use our mobile phones while we're driving with two thumbs on the wheel. 08704 2020 20 is the number. Uh, who's next? Reese in Cardiff. Good morning, you're on Talk Sport. Morning, Mike. It's been a thoroughly entertaining show. Um, I've not laughed so much in so long. Yes. Um, but I must say that I, I think we shouldn't be all too eager to discard with the savage gods because they're not thoroughly necessary. But I'm sorry, well, your phone is making a hell of a noise. Are you, are you underwater? Um, I'm not. Is it still a problem? No, you, I thought you were phoning us from the deeper part of your bath. No, it sounds better now. Sorry, I just had my Peter Marshall. Um, I don't think we should be too keen to discard with God, because I think a lot of the social problems we have in Britain um, are primarily due to us being an atheist country. Oh, yeah, well, this is what this is what the religious people have you believe. It's to do with us being um, unruly people. Nothing to do with whether we're Christian well, or... It, as you know, religion is a good means of controlling very idiotic and incapable people. And, you know, if we can use religion to our advantage, I don't think we should be or quite as able to think of it. But, it, but it, it doesn't control the people in the way in which you describe, like the ones that are running riot in this country, the, 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 the criminal element, the yob element. It has no influence whatsoever on them. It, it, it only controls it. those who have a strong belief in it because they don't blow their nose unless God says so. No, but if we look at the 50s, you know, we, you know, we take comparable crime statistics from that epoch and compare it to that one, we are, you know, a heathen bunch in, in Britain. But may, I mean that that may be true, but it doesn't mean that we are. I mean, the, it isn't cause and effect. Although no, 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 the, the, Arch, the I, Archbishop was the Archbishop was saying this the other day, uh, as we become more secular, so we become more law breaking. Well, I think we do in Britain. Look, we. You but I mean, the two things to happen to be happening at the same time, coincidentally. One doesn't predict the other. One doesn't beget the other. Your phone, I'm afraid, is not. Uh, no. broadcast quality. I'm going to have to let you go. For that reason only, uh, because we just couldn't understand, or I couldn't understand, and apparently my colleagues couldn't understand a word you were saying, which makes conversation difficult. So we'll stop it there, we'll take a moment, and then we shall return. This is Talk Sport. Pay attention, for there now follows a short history lesson. The Battle of the Three Peace Suite, 1472, a week in arrears for 18 months. The battle with your credit history can be a right moga, but not any longer with the Top Sport prepaid debit card. So it doesn't matter if you've been knocked back, blacklisted, or laughed at by the man in the post office, the Top Sport prepaid debit card is your knight in shining plastic. The Top Sport prepaid debit card, to give run to absolutely anyone. Click TopSport.com. Net now. At B and Q, we've cut 20% off the price of all power tools. That's 20% off all the big brands you need to saw, to drill, to sand, to screw, to make any job easy. And just in time for Christmas, it's a gift. Tired of being awake right now, unable to drift back to sleep on a regular basis. You don't have to suffer anymore. Help take back control of your sleep now with this remarkable self-hypnotic program. This program could help to gently coach you back to deep, refreshing sleep each and every night. Order your CD or download today by simply logging on to sleeptime.co.uk or calling free phone 0800 88 24024. Thursday, and the Satanta staff are brainstorming taglines for the new Satanta Golf Channel. How about Sky Sports has lost the US PGA Golf? To the point, but not exactly brimming with wit. Colin, uh, do you follow the US PGA Tour? Better follow it to Satanta then. That I like. Or what about the US PGA Tour is cancelled? What? For Sky Sports subscribers. Oh, that's clever, Debbie. Who needs an advertising agency? Satanta Golf's exclusively live coverage of the US PGA Tour starts January the 8th. Get Satanta. Call 08700 55 66 77 or visit satanta.com. Talk on 1089 and 1053 AM. Merry Christmas. Thank you coming in. And Sky Digital Channel 0108. Oh, oh, oh. Talk Sport. Good morning, I'm Mike Dickin. This is Talk Sport. Come December the 25th, I wonder how many children will leap out of bed on that Monday morning and say, Oh, joy of joys, it's Jesus' birthday. 
And I wonder how many will leap out of bed and say, Has Father Christmas been yet? I wonder, would it be safe to put a percentage on it of, like, 99.9 in favour of the latter statement? Philip is in Brighton. Philip, good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. The subject religion. Um, religion. I know, and I know you agree as well, that religion is responsible for more war, more bloodshed. It's been responsible for countless bloodshed. It's been responsible for every war that I've ever known about. Yes, I grant that. But oddly enough, I mean, I'm a Catholic, and I don't think, certainly not in my lifetime, I don't think I'd ever want to see the end of religion as evil as though it may be in some, in some cases. I think religion. I mean, I see religion. Do you as... need a god for religion? Yes. Or do you just need a theory of life? I think I need a god. Do you? I see. I, I, I Could you just not have all the, the, um, the theory, the, 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 the rules and regulations uh, of religion? And I'm trying to explain it as simply as I can, so I understand what I'm saying, uh, without having um, a deity. Yes. Could you? You could have a religion without a deity. Yes. Yeah, so you don't need God, then. Well, I, I mean, put it this way. I mean, I've got to have a guardian. I must have a guardian. Because right. I feel that I'm going to, be, that I'm going to become... Um, but to guard you from what? Well, to stop me from becoming... Um, um, from turning... What's that terrible, that word? Um, Atheist? No, what's that terrible, that awful word? Um, oh, it's, um, it, it's, the meaning of it is, is taking the law into your own hands and, and... Uh, anarchist. Yes, that's the one, anarchist, that's mm. the one. I feel, I've become, I've become an... Uh, so religion is controlling you? Yes, and I'm, in a way I'm glad it is because mm. it's, it's... I'm not an anarchist. No, no, no. But, yeah, I suppose you've got a lot more willpower than I've got. No, know? I don't need any. I needed willpower when I was a believer, up to the age of about ten, because I had to keep thinking, oh, I shouldn't do that. Oh, God wouldn't like that. Yeah. Uh, but as soon as I realised, you know, I pulled the wool from over my eyes, I was free of the shackles. And I thought, my goodness me, I'm enjoying my life a lot more now. Hmm. But I wasn't doing anything wrong. You know the way I feel about religion? I feel I would enjoy my life a lot less without religion. Would you really? I do. Religion's well, got that hold on me. And how long has that been? All my life. Really? Yes. Have you ever doubted it? None whatsoever. I really no. haven't. And do you, have, you, have you children and, and people to pass it on to? Oh, yes. So, and, and do they believe as well? Oh, yes, as much as I do. Goodness me. Do you think you're unusual? Not a bit. I mean, I feel for me, for me personally, mm. I feel that religion is doing the right thing for me. It's controlling me. It's, it's, do, you, do, you go, do you go to church and things like oh, that? absolutely. Every Sunday. How many times a day? I go to church. I go to the 11 o'clock mass. Mm. I go to confessions about once every three weeks. Right. But you didn't do anything wrong. No, but, oh, yeah, well... Religion all, we've controlled all, we've, you. We've all got sin. Oh, have we? Oh, I've got sin, yes. I was yeah. born with it. Yeah. So that's not a form of control, then, telling Anybody, you you're a Anyone who says they, they are without sin, they are a liar. No, 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 no. That's not true. People, people are not born with sin. This claptrap about original sin is a form of control. Ooh. Haven't you ever thought about that? No. Well, have a think about it, because I think you might suddenly realise that for all your life, you've been controlled because you were told you were a sinner. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. well, yes. Philip, I'm going to leave you there to think more on that, and I hope, I hope you sleep well. Thank, Thank you for the call. Uh, Terry is in Dorset. Terry, good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Uh, good morning. Uh, I've, I've come to know the Lord. I've been 40 years a believer. And it's only when I came to know Jesus, that's the main thing. Come to know Jesus, and you come to know who God is. All right, so... Understand? They're not the same person, then. Pardon? They're not the same person. Oh, they are. Yeah, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus was God, and Jesus is God. Right. And, and Jesus came to show Never understood that. Understand? Well, no, I don't, actually. Because yeah, I've never understood... You know, that's the main I, well, thing. Terry, I'm asking for help here. Yeah. I've never understood this... 
uh, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah, or, or three different things, but they're all the same. Yeah, they're three and one and one and three. Trinity. And I, I just don't understand that. How well, can you be yourself when you're the you Father? You understand it. You know, it's only as a believer you're going to understand it. All right. you, need to have, you need to have Christian faith, you know, faith to believe. So you have to stop thinking, then? No, no, you stop. When you come to know, when you put, put aside your, your own thinking and come to what believe what God has to say and through his word. So you allow God to do your thinking for you. I'm sorry. In but, one sense, yes. When you come to know Jesus, right. that's the main thing. But when, when you came to know... Yeah, yeah, you keep telling me that, but you won't tell me why, because you won't stop talking. What, what, what was different about going to know Jesus? Well, the whole thing, I was, I was making a mess up in my own life. Mm. You know, I was going my own way. I was very atheistic myself at one time. When, mm. I, when I came back to church in Dublin way back 40 years ago, when I came to know Jesus, you know, the, you know, the Bible says, How did you know him? I mean, what yeah, was the relationship? I spoke about his word, uh, Mike. Well, you mean you, he spoke to you? Or you did... take him at his word. Did he speak to you? He says, as many as received him, to them he gives the right to become a child of God. Now, you've got to take him out of his word for yourself. No, but um, that isn't his word. That's in the Bible. Yeah. Did, he, did he speak to you? Yeah, I took him out of his word. That's the main thing. He speaks to us through his word. I take him out of his promise. He no, no, but hang on. He didn't write. Just, Jesus didn't say that. He did. He said, that's the, that's the idea of the Bible. They're his promises to you, for you to accept for yourself, Mike. Oh. And if you don't, well... He did, so he didn't come to you in the night or in the church or, or on the bus and in, say... He came to me in my need when I realised I was making a mess of my life. How did you know he was there? Myself. How did you know he was there? Because I, I took him at his word. No, no, how did you know he was there? Well, I took him at his word. I, I, you can ask the main thing. I, I, I practiced faith to believe, take him at his word. And when I received him, that's the main thing. You've got to take that step of faith yourself. And when you receive him, then he'll become real to you in your own personality, in your own life. But and if you don't, if you don't, if you don't receive him, receive him. Well, he's, he's just, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, you know him in your head, but not in your heart. You see, when you receive him, he comes to live in your heart and live in your life. And he become, you become a new person. And well, how do you become a new person? What do you become? That's what you come at the point of the Bible say you're born of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but how, I mean, what changes? What, 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 what happens? Pardon? What changes? What changes? Well, I, uh, well, one thing, I was, I was a slave to smoking, drinking, gambling, living that frivolous life and a beast of many habits. But now, when I've been changed up for over, over, over many years, you know. So you, what, do you do, what do you do? What do you do? Sort of things. Oh, blimey. What do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Oh, I, I like football, and I go to church, and my main emphasis, I, I enjoy having Jesus in my heart and life, and enjoy, you know, living for him and living with him. That's the main thing, you know what I mean? Do you live with anybody yeah, else? Pardon? Do you live with anyone else? Oh, yes, I've got a wife and two kids. Right. Yeah. And do they yeah. live with Jesus as well? Yes, my wife, I became, my wife was, became a Christian when she was 15. Right. And I was 26 before I came to know the Lord myself. Right. And now, uh, as you say, I've known him for 40 years. But he came to, you've got to come to know Jesus, and see, that's the main thing. Hmm. Jesus is the mediator between God and man, you know what I mean? I and thought he was the same. Pardon? I thought he was the same person. No, no, he is the same person, but he came for a particular reason. You know, God sent Jesus. That's why we celebrate Christmas. That's a wonderful thing. God, that Jesus became one of us. That's a great, and I can identify myself with him now, with Jesus. You know what I mean? And then I can identify myself with God. Good. Well, you, I'm very happy for you. Thank you for your call. I don't want to change your mind at all. It seems other people want to change mine, but if you want to believe in God, that's all right by me. It just makes me feel a bit funny about you. Uh, Nadia is in Leeds. Nadia, good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Good morning. Morning. Um, I've been, um, I've spent a few years looking for God, trying to answer that question. And my conclusion so far that um, all, all major religions, uh, or any religion that has a God that's reward and punish and hell and heaven is a man-made, and, uh, which is not really, I don't have a problem with that. It's, um, it's to organize people and to um, make them stay in the straight and narrow. Like the gentleman was talking about Brighton earlier, saying if he controlled, otherwise he would be out of control. Yeah. My problem is when religion starts, right now I'm an unbeliever completely, but... Um, you're a non-believer. No, I'm a non-believer. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm. I'm a, I don't, can't see really say I'm a non-believer. I'm reading about Taoism right now, um, which is basically there's no God. It's nature itself hmm. that's creating. Uh, but 
um, my problem is when religions start, people start killing each other because of what they believe in. That, for me, religion becomes a problem. But as long as it keeps people from harming others and stealing and killing them, it's fine, really. So being part of a religion is a bit like being part of a political party, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, actually, that's, that's, yeah, that's my point, actually. Yeah. It's more of a political... Um, uh, we all believe the same thing, and we all yeah, exactly. have the same God. Yeah. And in, you know, yeah. in the case of the Labour Party, God is Tony Blair. In the case of the Tories, God is David Cameron. Exactly, it's yeah. absolutely. That, that's a, they, they think that's really Actually, different. when you think about it, three in one, that goes, doesn't it? <laughs> M- Ming Campbell, David Cameron, Tony Blair, they all look the same, <laughs> say the same things. Exactly. Yeah. It's the, um, the thing that people are missing, which is um, I... It's really sad in me when I hear intelligent people totally, absolutely, utterly believe that's the truth and that's that and that's your way to I know. Hell. It's really amazing. Imagine when... how I feel. <laughs> Nadia, I've got to move on. Thank you very much for the call. Well, we've solved one thing. The Holy Trinity, we found them. Mean Campbell, David Cameron and Tony Blair. Yes. Uh, Mike Mendoza makes it um, a quartet. Mike, good morning. Good morning to you, and of course I, as a Jedi... Oh, yeah, yeah quite. ...bring you the good I... witches of Obi-Wan Kenobi and uh, all his followers. Yes, good. I'm glad you did. Um, <laughs> I've, I've never seen Star Wars, but... It's I'm good. Just, it's I, good no, I'm told, my, see, I, I, I just... I saw the beginning of it a hundred years ago, and I thought, oh, no, not a bloody science fiction film. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Did okay for Scientology. Yes, yes, Tom Cruise, and no, not him. Yes, he uh, is, and, yes, and, he is, and John and, Travolta. John Travolta, yes. yes. Two of the great intellects of our time. Yeah. And show, show me a poor religion as well. Yeah, do, quite. Do, do you know how many God channels there are on Sky at the moment? Oh, don't. I mean, dozens of them. And, and, and it costs a fortune to have a channel on Sky. We had a laugh about this year. Two years ago, uh-huh. I was, we had some people staying. I can't remember where they're from. Now. And I said, have you seen this? Because I'd never seen it. And they apparently had never seen it either. Uh, But we've been told about it. So we turned on. And there was this American personage standing there saying, And I would, uh, and I would, uh, and I would, uh, give me your money. And they all rushed forward and gave him dollar bills. Exactly. And he was gone in seconds up the road to the next church (laughs) where he did it again. And I thought, I could do that. And you will walk again. Yes. Trust me. Yes. Oh, dear. I'm a big guy. Mine is a quid back. (laughs) Yeah. Go on. I want to talk about inheritance tax uh, today. Uh, Right. You may have read the story during the week about two sisters who uh, were refused to be allowed to be like a couple. They, they lived together all their lives, yeah. never had partners. No. Uh, they eat, drink, live together, and have done, I say, all their lives. They're now very elderly, yet they haven't got the same rights as as a, a couple, even a same-sex couple. No. They have no rights whatsoever. So they, in fact, are going to have to pay a small fortune uh, when one of them dies uh, f- because of the property that they live now, in. Now, these are the two ladies who live off the island just outside of Lewin. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that disgusting? It is awful, isn't it? And it another really way, is. Another way of the government making money, you see. Well, I mean, they're thinking of plenty of ways at the moment. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm trying to think of something else. Well, air, airport, the airport, of air, you know, flight tax. Well, what, the, they'll bring the light con tax that is. Well, the light tax will be the next one. Remember years ago, I mean, long before you were born, of course, but during the war, after the war, uh, they brought a tax in, uh, depending on how many windows you had in your house. Yeah, window tax, yeah. 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 That's why a lot of houses, and certainly with some of the older ones that you go and see that are for sale for sixpence, uh, have had all the windows blocked up. Uh, you can see, you know, the difference in the brickwork. Yeah. If it was a bit dark and air, and then somebody will say, yeah, well, of course, they, they bricked up all the windows to save on tax. Exactly. And, and can anyone actually name a good Prime Minister we've had since Churchill? I mean, uh, I, I've been alive since the days of Churchill. Uh, every Prime Minister, of course, oh has been here. God. And I'm trying to find one. Uh, Thatcher was good for a few she years. She was good for 12 years. Uh, John Major was a waste of space. Oh, he's uh, just somewhere to hang a suit. Douglas Hume was a waste of space. Yeah. Uh, Callaghan was a waste of space. Uh, Anthony Eden just about cocked it up for everybody. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. Mm. So, have we ever had a really decent Prime Minister? Macmillan, what did he do? Uh, You've well, never had him so, had so good. good, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think I left the country soon after that. Yeah. Uh, Who were, oh, Wilson, oh dear. Wilson, right. yeah, well, he changed the face of uh, yeah. politics in a way. Yeah. Uh, Who was the best Prime Minister we never had? I wonder. Oh, oh, Haig. I think Haig, would, again, could actually make a Prime Minister. But he, he still might come back. Yeah, it? I hope so. If it wasn't for his silly hats and riding up and down the, s- the slides at Thorpe Park, yeah. he, he might have survived. Exactly. So we're going to talk about everything this morning and put the world to rights. Well, if you're going to talk about everything, mm-hmm. you've left nothing for anybody else. That's the idea. I'd okay. like to be greedy. Michael, you should look forward to it. Have fun. Bye. Thanks a lot. Mike Mendoza with you right after the news at one. This is Talk Sport.
It's as Christmassy as huge credit card debt and yellow snow. The Talk Sport Panto 2006. Cinder Beaky. Where is that girl? My helmet needs a polish. With songs. We want to be cheap. And laughter. I need a woman. And jokes, old and new. Try supporting Charlton. That should take your mind off it. Starring Larry Grayson as Graham Beecroft. They're throwing a party, but I haven't been invited. Rabsy Nesbitt as Alan Brazil. My homebrew brings all the boys to the yard. I've got Bucky and Stella Artois. Talk sports, no expense spent Christmas spectacular. Cinder Beaky. Starts tomorrow morning on the sports breakfast and continues throughout the week. Christmas on Talk Sport. It's a pantomime. Oh, no. Shut it! TalkSport. The radio station which encourages responsible drinking from its listeners. TalkSport. Good morning, I'm Mike Nickin. This is TalkSport. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we go on. Uh, next Friday's programme uh, will be devoted, if not entirely, very largely, to parking tickets. The boys over here, Barry and Neil, sort out the parking tickets. Some of the successes you would have read about and not realised, well, I didn't realise, so I'm not blaming you. Uh, what work had gone on behind the scenes to get some of the stories in the paper that had been there. Thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds have been repaid to motorists who've been accused of parking with the illegal tickets used to try and wean money out of them. Uh, some of those who've been using the heavy-handed tactics of going around knocking the door, crushing the car, frightening the kids, taking the money, and all the rest of it. Uh, they're now looking for work, a few of them, not as many as should be. Uh, some great stories. So if you have been wrongly accused, and the chance I have... If you've got a parking ticket, the chances are it's illegal anyway. Um, we'll be talking about parking tickets again, and all associated with it, and all the scams that go on. I mean, they really are disgraceful. So we'll be talking about that. And on Saturday, yes, I'll have a surprise for you next Saturday. It's not that I won't be here. I will be here. I will be here next Saturday. And, and we have a very... I think you'll love it. No, I know you'll love it. But I can't tell you what it is, because you might love it too much. But you'll find out next Saturday. But I'm not going for a moment. got too much to do. Uh, like talking to uh, Martin in Huddersfield. Martin, good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Good morning, Mike. Morning. Um, the only thing that I need to know about religion is there's lots of religions and they can't even agree with themselves and they're all supposed to believe in God. Do you know how, do you know how many religions there are in this country? Well, a, I, I know there there's about 3,000 altogether, isn't there? Mm. 700 registered religions in this country, apparently. In this country. And not one of them agrees with the other. And they say, oh, well, if you're religious, you're a good person. Well, they never tell you which religion that you should follow to be uh, a good person. Which, which, which Well, one? there's a question we raised earlier, which, you know, if you're going to follow the dictat of one religion, as one lady said, if everyone was religious, the whole world would be a happier place. Yeah. Well, and she, and then she went on to say, what she meant was like Christianity. That. And it didn't do a lot of good then, did it? And then what happens then? If all if all religions just became one, then they can't even agree on the context of the religion. So that religion splits and that religion splits. And then you just end up like this again, don't you? Well, if any one of them is right, all the others are wrong. That's right. But, but what gets me more than anything is these... Once you've heard... I, I don't think you're a person who likes monotony, are you? Um, I can't even spell it. Right, because... What, once you've heard something, you don't want to hear it again. So all I can put it down to is, like, God said this, Jesus did that, Moses did this, the prophet Mama did that. Mm. Thank you very much, I've heard it, and I don't want to hear it again. But every week, people go to church and they hear the same thing over and over and over and over again. I don't want to hear it more than once. I've heard it once. I don't want to hear it again. Nice it's buildings, the though. They have some I nice buildings. Oh, I love churches. Church oh, what? I, I, I tour churches and cathedrals. I love them. Really? They're the most beautiful architecture in the world. But they don't, they think they belong to their religion. No. But they belong to all of us, unless yeah. I'm wrong on that one. But before I, before I go, because obviously you're a bit pressed for time, I just want to put you up on a few, a couple of things that religious people are very ignorant about. Um, this will harm you for the future. Now, the other guy earlier on said, um, evolution is a theory. Mm. Now, the word theory does not mean the same in science as it does like you've got a theory there's a, a green-eyed monster hiding behind that. Corner. No, right, no. okay, yeah. The word theory in science means it's actually proven in science mm. to a satisfactory degree. Do you it's get what I'm saying? It's a formula, yeah. It's not, it's not the same theory. No, no. It's where religious people become very ignorant. And then they say you can't get everything out of nothing. Um, 
but you can because you just reverse the fabric of space time and that gives you everything back into nothing and you can you can start wherever you want if you can follow me on that one well yeah I mean, if you could reverse the clock i mean that's the purpose of the time I mean, machine, it was the it? fellow in the wheelchair what they call him the the english professor um he discovered that if you reverse Stephen back Hawking. from a star yeah, S- yeah Stephen when Hawking. a star collapses into nothing you could say the star is everything mm. and it's collapsed into nothing so it's yeah. reversed the so, so if you can't if you if, if the reverse theory is what's it's a nothing black, into everything what's a black hole yeah martin we shall move on and thank you for the call uh cameron is in dundee cameron good morning you're on talk sport hi good morning to you mike i'll, I'll be brief do three precepts by which I, I live my life. Do as you would be done by. And that has, that principle, Mike, has stood the test of time. Everything is connected. That, as your last caller said, quantum theory tends to back this up. And the universe is cyclical. Well, there's so, no doubt of that, yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. Mike, there didn't have to be an original God if everything is repetitive. No, because uh, he could have been, well, he might be born tomorrow, you never know. Exactly. And he'll be there for another 67 million years. Exactly. Mm. You're absolutely right, Cameron. Thank you very much for the call. Um, I was going to say something quite profound there, but not being... Oh, yes, that wasn't profound at all. It was just um, do as you would be done to and all that sort of thing. That's all very well, unless you, for no reason at all, wake up in the morning in a bad mood. Very rare for me, it has to be said. But this morning was, well, yesterday morning, was one of those exceptions. And I was driving into town with my dearly beloved. And she said, somebody's going to get it today, aren't they? I said, shut up or it'll be you. And she said, oh, no, don't just let me have all your wrath. Spread it about a bit and share it out among a few shop assistants. And I thought, well, that's fair, isn't it? So it all get a little bit of my bad temper, and not all at once. Now, uh, how much more Christian could you be than that? Hmm? Right. Alan is in Liverpool. Alan, good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Well, I won't say Don't Alan. ask. Okay. Don't ask. Yeah, you're doing all right, mate. <laughs> anyway, the question I wanted to pose to you, um, you know... Uh, well, actually, it was a, it was a statement, and I wanted to see what you thought. Mm. Was surely the greatest creator of all is the mind. It is the only creator. It is. It creates everything. Mm-hmm. It is responsible for the world about us. Well, it's responsible it, for everything. Yes. Nothing without a mind ever made anything. Exactly. Yes. But on a on a more deeper level, a more profound level. Um, you know, if there is only one life, shall we say, and you have a mind during this life, isn't the mind the creator of the world you see around you? You know, because... Are you what, saying do we all see a different world? Yes. Hmm, that's a great... I mean, I've, I've wondered... I mean, we, the only test of this is a photograph, uh, because the only time you know you look at the same thing as somebody else is when you're both looking at a photograph. Oh, well, I'll give you a better test, actually, Mike. Go on. A courtroom, 20 witnesses. They're all going to come up with a different story, aren't they? Well, I mean, that, that is the, the frailty of the human mind. Uh, well, gonna, you, good, yeah, good point again. Or, and, and the persuasiveness of other people's argument. That's right. The stronger mind is going to win. Well, the, the, the open... I mean, the, those with an open mind, as some say they have are more receptive to other people's ideas. That's they may true. come back to their original uh, thought in the end, but it will take them a little longer. Yes. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But Not at all. the idea that um, we should all be open-minded would slow down the process just a little, because although I believe I am open-minded, there are certain subjects to which I've closed my mind because I've made up my mind, if you see what I mean. I think yes, making up yes. your mind is the same as saying I've closed... You know, the, the shop's closed now, thank you very much. Uh, we're not selling any more of that today, because we've finished, we've sold out. And that's, that's about where I am with religion. Oh, no, no, no. With the existence of God. I just... Nothing... I mean, if somebody jumped on the bench now and said, um, ha, I've got you, I'm God, I wouldn't believe it. 
Uh, James is in East Anglia. James, good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Good morning, yeah. First time caller. Uh, what gets me is that uh, God must have one hell of an ego. Mm. Because, because, like, all, all the, like, uh, religious groups, they all, they all say pretty much the same thing when it comes to, like, God. And that is, you know, to pray, to preach every day. And I mean, if there was a God and there was a creator... Worship no mean, other than me, somebody says, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, Thou shalt I mean, worship no idols. I mean, he, he must have, like, a one hell of an ego, because expecting every, like, eight billion people on the planet to, like, preach and, and worship to him every day, you know, you know, non non-stop. And I think, I think... And imagine I mean, he's looking out for the one who doesn't. He must yeah. have damn good eyesight as well. Exactly. I mean, I had, it, I had it shoved down my throat when I was younger by my mother. My mother, she was Jehovah's Witness, and they were... That's the lot I was trying to think of. Oh. Yeah, and they are absolute nutters. And I tell you, they're, they're one religion where they are completely, completely brainwashed. My mother, like, um, she, she, I mean, I've, I've come out with facts to her to prove to her that, you know, um, that what they're like, and, and she won't have it. You know, even if, uh, even if it's like... Um, uh, black, black and white in front of her. I, I know. Yeah. I mean, I've had them at the door, and I don't want to pick on any one, but uh, I, I honestly believe that the phrase you just used is probably accurate. I, I think they're certifiable. Yeah. But we Absolutely. have to leave it there, James, I'm afraid. It was very nice to talk to you, as it was to everyone else. Regardless of what your point of view or what we had to say to each other, I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. And I shall thoroughly enjoy talking to you and with you next Friday. But we should be talking about um, parking tickets. The chances are that in this country, if you've been issued with a parking ticket, there's a very good chance that it isn't legal. However, it'll still cost you a lot of cash unless you fight it. And you must not give up. And if you're not sure how to fight it, talk to Barry and Neil next week. They'll show you how to do it, and they'll give the success rate that they've had. A surprise on Saturday, but the bigger surprise in a moment is Mike Mendoza on TalkSport.